pain here as well and is likely to come back uh, if he's healthy for the Olympics next year in Japan as he starts to wind down an incredible international career. The soul will jump the tip along with Mason Plumley as we get set to go for the final stateside exhibition for Team USA. They're off to Australia tomorrow night. They'll play three exhibition games there, then head to China for the World Cup, which for the U.S. begins on September 1st against the Czech Republic. The soul taps it back. Ricky, Rub Ricky Rubio gathers, and we're off and running here on a Friday night in Anaheim. Ricky Rubio, remember, now a part of the Phoenix Suns roster. And right off the bat, Matt, for all the viewers, just watch the continuity and the chemistry of this Bain team. This team has been together so long and also a lot of cutting and moving without the basketball. Good defense by Donovan Mitchell, and that's what you want from Team USA. Offensive continuity might not be there right away. They're working on that, but defense in the USA should have an advantage, and they got to disrupt the rhythm of Spain. Mitchell couldn't quite walk the tight rope, and it goes back to Spain with four seconds left on the shot clock. It was defense that turned things around for the senior men's national team, the blue team last week. Gasol will take the shot, beats the buzzer, and we have our first points of the game. Marc Gasol on the board, and it's 2-0 like Spain. Aaron Fox came into the game after the senior men's national team had fallen behind the select team early last Friday in Las Vegas and really set the tone defensively, and they turned things around with defense providing the offense in transition. And I think Kemba is going to have to set the tone, especially as a point guard playing against Rubio in this setting and throughout this entire USA basketball experience. He's going to be the one on the defensive end as a point guard being able to disrupt. And we know what he can do on the offensive yes. end. He can create his own and get easy buckets for Team USA. Throws the Spanish defense just long enough to make his way in for the layup. And we are tied at two. Goes for the steal there. The U.S. will be very aggressive defensively. Let's watch Kemba. And you can see his ability with the basketball to create shot, get himself an easy, uncontested layup in a half-court situation. It's wonderful and marvelous to watch. He had 14 points and four assists last week. Rubio knocks down the jumper and shows off the touch. And that's one thing Greg Popovich was telling us, that some of these players are different in their national team uniform than what you might see on a nightly basis in the NBA. And Rubio is a good example of that, that he cited. He'll be much more aggressive in terms of the shot. As Middleton knocks down the three. Yeah, they're so comfortable. And they've been running offense, and they've been playing with each other. And they know where to get their shots. And then I think for them is they're playing for their country. They're a little bit loose, and they definitely want to come out here and beat Team USA. Rudy Fernandez tried to get it to Gasol. Back come the Americans. Up top, disrupted. Donovan Mitchell went up high to get it. And you Chris talk Middleton. about shooting, Matt Weiner, and this is where Chris Middleton, I think, is going to be so important because the reason why is they have some fantastic shooters, but he's one of those guys that can also defend you know, multiple positions anywhere from two through four. So he's going to have to play a lot of minutes. Joe Harris is a fantastic shooter, but Middleton can do it both on both ends, offensively That's and defensively. Rubio. Rubio has his second bucket in three attempts. U.S. will get on a plane tomorrow night out of L.A. and head to Australia. Turn it over here. Come turn on Gomez. Finishes with the left hand. And man, we talk about Rubio's offense, but I think right there you showed that he's disruption of Kimball Walker. He created that turnover. Uh, he got an easy bucket for his teammate. Always been a big steals guy. Got caught there working on the pick and roll with Plumley and Walker. Walker's shot won't go, but he's fouled by Rubio. Matt, when we were getting a chance to spend some time with Greg Popovich, and he talked about coming out in the first five minutes, it's totally different in the NBA. I mean, you get a chance to come out and play. You have 48 minutes. It's only 40 minutes. And usually in big time play, it's a, a playoff series, the best of seven. This is a situation where you got to come out and play quickly and be ready from the start in the first five minutes. And he said he broke down some practices where they were trying to simulate that you had to come out and play hard the first five minutes and not dig yourself a hole. They essentially held five minute scrimmages here yesterday to emphasize that point that you don't have time to make the big comeback. You better come out and play right away. And the Americans clearly have a talent advantage over anybody in the world. Still the only team with all NBA players on the roster, no matter how it shakes out. 
But teams like Spain, teams like Serbia, France, Australia, those guys have played so many games together that there is a built-in chemistry that you can't replicate over a week or two of practice. Robert to his right gives it up to Hernan Gomez and out to the high post for Gasol. Back to Club Bear for three off the back rim. Now you talk about passing from Ricky Rubio, and they have a fantastic guy in Marc Gasol from the center spot who also can facilitate. Quick shot for Donovan Mitchell. He knocks down the three. U.S. retakes the lead at 10-8. And to me, that's the evolution of Donovan Mitchell, being able to be a scorer without the basketball. He is fantastic with it in his hands, but now he's playing with a guy in Kimball Walker. Can he be just as dominant of scoring without having the basketball and possessions in his hands? Really going to lean on him during this World Cup run. 36% three-point shooter last year for the Utah Jazz but he averaged just under 24 points a game in his second year in the league. The soul somehow got open, and Mitchell had to foul him to prevent the dunk. That was this communication there defensively. I mean, because he was open for a long time, man. Yeah. <laughs> no one picked him up. I don't know if Team USA was in some kind of a zone. And you see Martha Mitchell talking about Donovan Mitchell. I mean, Mark Gasol was standing there for a long time, and I think Pop is saying, yes, we're playing like a matchup zone, but you got to match up with somebody early and not give an easy layup. And totally the big on the floor for the U.S. was caught underneath the rim. Marcus so Marcus Gasol will go to the free throw line. Such a great career he has cobbled together for himself, and now an NBA champion with the Toronto Raptors. Ten-plus years with the Memphis Grizzlies, defensive player of the year back in 2013, and a three-time NBA All-Star, also great international career, a couple of Olympic silver medals in 2008 and 2012, missed the 16 Olympics because of a broken foot. How good was he, Matt, with the Toronto Raptors throughout that one run in the playoffs? And he was acquired, you know, halfway through the season, but boy, did he fit in perfectly with the Raptors. Such a good defensive team, and that may be a little overlooked because of Kawhi's heroics. Walker guarded by Rubio, gives it up, gets it back. Middleton will take it and knock it down. Chris Middleton three pointer. gets it going, two of two from the field. He's hit both threes he's tried, and he has six, quick six points. The U.S. is now three of four from outside the three-point strike. And with basketball, Matt, it comes down to who fits perfectly. And you can see some of those screens that Spain is setting on Team USA. That's going to be a point of emphasis because they really lay into you. And there's from that, Rudy shooting that shot. And there's Kyle Kuzma bringing it up. And there's Chris Middleton. He can flat out shoot it. Three of three for Chris Middleton now. He's got the feeling. And you're hearing the, uh, it's not a boo, it's coos every time he touches the ball. This happened last week in Las Vegas as well. Presumably that trend won't continue in Australia. So he's playing exhibition games there. Gasol hits the deck. Foul off the ball. And totally different in international play for a lot of for these guys from Team USA. You get a chance to kind of work your set way into rhythm, Matt, when you're playing for your team respectively and at the NBA. But now, you know, it's three, four, five minute spurts. There's not these nine, 10, 11, 12 minute long spurts you will play with Team USA. So you got to come out and make an impact on a game quickly. And a lot of young guys sometimes think it's offensively, but it's more defensively when you start playing an international play. Foul one against Miles Turner. Here's Rubio over Kuzma. And Joe Harris just into the game, comes down with it, gives it up for Donovan Mitchell. Here's Jason Tatum, played very well last week on both ends of the floor. Harris gives it up to Kuz. Good body and ball movement here on this possession. Turner stripped by Rubio, who's always among the league leaders in steals and steal percentage. Very crafty. His instincts on the offensive end as a point guard, but on the defensive end is more impressive because he's always right there. Hernan Gomez can't connect. Kuzma comes away with it. He's pushing. Gives it up for Tatum. Passes on the corner three. Mid-range shot won't go. Flaubert has it. Rubio out to Hernan Gomez now. This was there is so good. And Mark Gasol at the point, I would say, center spot. Yep. Because then now guys are moving, and he can put the ball on the, on the money. And there's Rubio kicking it out to Mark Gasol. Gasol could do that as well. Kuzma comes down with it one more time and pushes. 
for the U.S. Stripped by Colbert, and Rubio has it. Doesn't have numbers. We'll think about the three. He'll try the three and knock it down. Ricky Rubio hits the three. Their first make in six attempts. Fun start here in Anaheim. The U.S. with an early two-point lead. Well, as you probably have heard by now, a big to-do made over a 10-minute scrimmage that took place on the campus of UCLA at the Lakers workout facility on Wednesday, where a group of quote-unquote fringe NBA players and G-leaguers beat members of the U.S. senior men's national team 36 to 17. Coach Popovich called it a good lesson, as Smitty referenced earlier, the FIBA game shorter. Just a 10-minute scrimmage teaches the guys they need to get off to a fast start, and they can't take any game for granted. Now, he called tonight huge, as Kuzman just hits the three for Team USA, Smitty. He said that, that this is the challenge that they need before they head abroad. You're so right, Jared. I mean, reason why on all accounts, there's a team with Spain you're looking at. They have size, they have shooting. But more importantly, they have chemistry, continuity, and also they played in international. And also the rules are different. And we're getting to that. And this is a young team with a lot, a lot of experience. Also, everybody's saying they're the B team. And, I, you know, I don't like that for these guys because they're going to come out here and play extremely hard. They're here. They want to be here. And I think for these guys, they got to come out, trust each other, and definitely, like I said before, you're not going to be able to get it all on the offensive end. But definitely on the defensive end, you can get stops. Well, if the Americans can keep their turnover total yes. below their three-point make total, they'll be in good shape. And so far, it's five turnovers and four or five from three-point range. A couple of substitutions for Team Spain. Pau Ribas just into the game scene wearing number eight. And during the break, Sergio Yol entered. As did number 22, Xavi Rabaseda. Sergio has been with this national team for so long, and he's been coveted by a lot of NBA teams. Everybody waiting to see him, for him to come over. Don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I've seen him play so much. Yeah. He is a skillful point guard for this uh, Spain team. Well, Greg Popovich told us he would like to see better rebounding from his team. Miles Turner answering that call with the offensive putback there. Yol tried to find Hernan Gomez. Darren Fox comes back, wearing number 20 in blue for the Americans. So fast and makes his own offense out of nothing. You know, he's 6'3", has unbelievable size, but to have the speed with that size for a point guard position and athleticism, and the game has slowed down for him. He's so comfortable. I think he's going to be a difference maker. And there's Sergio with a nice pass. He is really good. That's Willie Hernan Gomez now. No, you're Hernan Gomez. I'm, I'm going Recovery by the hair. Spin. You know, this, Willie has a little bit of touch of blonde yep. in his hair. Joe Harris setting up Turner for the dunk. Nice look for Harris, who's obviously known as a stand-up shooter, but a little playmaking there from number 47, which matches his three-point percentage from last season to lead the NBA. He's really shooting it at 47%. Here's Gill, number 23. He's 31 years of age, second-round pick back in 2009, in part because he can do things like that. Hey, you know, I've watched him play an international play for Spain for a number of years. Um, he's crafty, he's strong, and one thing is he's such a competitor and he's feisty. And then it also have the combination of him and Ricky Rubio at that point guard position. Uh, they can hang with basically everybody in this tournament at that point guard position, Turner. except the Team USA. Turner becoming a factor here early on. Turner a moment ago set up by Joe Harris for the easy two. I like Joe coming off the screen and great bounce pass to Miles Turner. Been able to read the defense and great job by Team USA. Had fantastic spacing on that play. It's not something Joe will be asked to do very often for the Nets with Kyrie Irving in the lineup next season. Safe to say? No, no, not, not, not much. Matt. When you have a guy like Kyrie, and Joe can get off the basketball at all times with Kyrie and just wait to get wide open shots because of the ability of Kyrie to find him. Miles Turner, that was six Lopez. points in five minutes worth of work. Brook Lopez into the game for the United States after re-upping this summer with the Milwaukee Bucks. U.S. up by six here late in the first quarter in Anaheim, California. Here's Yol, has already knocked down one three. Back rims that second one. Harris comes down with the rebound for the U.S. Cross court to Tatum now. Jason Tatum, cross over, comes up short on the shot, but 
winds up back in his hands. Here's Lopez. First shot of the night. Man. Drops for the big bell. We've all watched his career, man. I mean, the ability now to just fly out be a three-point shooter, you got to give a testament to him, the work he's put in. And he is confident in knocking down these shots from three-point range. Well, to me, there's not a, a player in the league who better personifies the switch to the three-point game than Brooke Lopez, who hit three threes in his first eight years in the NBA and 433 the last three seasons. Back for 14 from the field and five of six from three-point range. And Smitty, that was a little bit of a concern about this roster. It's a shorter line that the, the FIBA distance is shorter than the NBA distance, but it was a concern about the roster and the way it was constructed. Could this team spread the floor effectively enough against high-level international competition? And based on last Friday and what we've seen so far tonight, the answer is yes. Yeah, and I think the concern was because you don't see a lot of guys that are just knockdown shooters. The reason why I would say is not much of a concern because you have so many guys that can break you down from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint and being able to get your feet set and shoot three-point shots the way they will be able to because of a Fox, because of a Kimball Walker. Uh, having that much time and a shorter line, it will make it a much easier for Team USA. Jason Tatum tried to throw it down. And Little rebus came down very hard. Man, hit his head. He's on the floor still as they battle for that rebound. Tatum was fouled there, but for the moment, the concern is for Powell Rebus. Went up for that rebound and came down very hard on his back and may have hit the back of his head. We'll watch it. Uh, it did not hit the floor. It's a good sign, but yeah, but it did still snap doesn't back. feel good. Yeah. Snap back, and that's you can see. He's trying to tell the referee, I got hit. Yes, you did. Good sign Rebos has the wherewithal to argue. Mm -hmm. And stick in the game, more importantly. You know, and I was, to the today during, we were at the hotel, Matt, and talking to a lot of fans, they were like, what's your concern with Team USA? I'd say my concern would be just the experience and chemistry part. Uh, and they were saying, what, what's some of the things you like about this team? I'd say they have a lot of guys that's energetic, that are in a 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", role that can play multiple positions on both defensively and offensively. And I, have, I said they have some guards in De'Aaron Fox and Kimball Walker that can just get where they want to and put pressure on you defensively. I think the one concern I will have is their bigs being in foul trouble and being able to, I would say, match up against some of the elite bigs, right. you know, from other countries. Tatum nearly got that to go at the buzzer. And the U.S. And obviously, all these guys want to come back healthy for the start of the NBA season. So I understand a lot of what your team works on is the prevention of injuries, trying to preempt things. Absolutely. We work on all the things that we know help to reduce the risk of injury. And we really work with the players on educating them about all the things that they can do proactively. Their recovery is so important. So they work hard. You see them work in preparation for the game, but then they do a lot of work after the game for their recovery so they can be ready for the next one. Dr. Hallahan, the team, the country thanks you for your duties here and enjoy Australia. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. There's Dr. Lisa Callahan, Matt. All right, Jared, thanks much. U.S. now has its largest lead of the night at 11, 33-22. Shot nearly 56% in that first quarter, five of eight from three-point range. Turned it over five times. I guess that's just kind of the price of doing business when you're throwing a team together and trying to create chemistry on the fly. And that was the only, I would say, hiccup they had in that first quarter. Defensively, they were fantastic, and I thought offensively they got some easy shot. They took high percentage shots, and but they destroy Spain on, on a glass. I think 14-3. to three. That is right. Plus 11 on rebounds in a quarter. Here's Rebox. Had that hard fall a moment ago. Soft touch on that three-pointer. How Rebus on the board plays his professional ball like so many of these players in the Spanish league, which is widely regarded as the second best league in the world. He plays for Barcelona. Brooke Lopez back in, hands off to his Bucks teammate, Chris Middleton. And back out to Jason Tatum. Middleton has it, goes baseline. Sets up Brown for the dunk. Jalen Brown flying in. And Pop talks about it a lot, you know, 0.5 seconds. Make a decision, make a move. Uh, make something happen for others and team usa is doing a nice job but not ball you know watching no ball stoppage of guys that are just over dribbling right now they're moving it second chance for spain here yull has it the veteran 
Out to Hernan Gomez. Willie is off on the three. Middleton sees Walker ahead of the pack. And an easy two for Kemba Walker. Good vision Kemba by Chris Walker. Middleton. And Kemba's loving this. Him and Donovan Mitchell talking. Donovan's about to check in. And, and they're getting excited about defensively right now. Team USA cutting down the execution of Team Spain. Y'all into the paint. Sets up Rob Seda, who can't connect on the three. And Jalen Brown. Round number 33 of the Boston Celtic brings it up for the Americans. Walker over to Tatum. Quick drive, and he hammers it home. Knew exactly where he wanted to go with it. And Jason Tatum puts a little charge in the Anaheim crowd. He's doing a nice job, Matt, of turning. And as he was younger, sometimes you take that bump and you can't go through contact. He showed it right there that he's getting stronger and decisive on his first step. He is so good because he can create his own, and I like just as well equally. Equally, he can play well without the basketball. Now, Tatum is playing for the first time on the senior men's national team, but he has gold medals at the under-19, under-17, and under-16 levels wearing the red, white, and blue. Also really good last week in the scrimmage when he was 6 of 8, knocked down three threes, and had 17 points in 16 minutes. What I love about him is, man, his, his fundamentals are there at such a young age, his, his high level. And also, you see his size at that small forward position. You know, he's not an elite athlete, but he has the quickness and also a decisive first step to beat guys. Also, with his jump shot, his handles got much better to create his own. Spanish guys right now are thinking, wait a minute, he's not an elite athlete? Uh, Just blew past us and dunked on us. Not Come on, Smitty. Not vertically. <laughs> Here's Yol setting up Dio. You know, Lamane Dio. You know, if I was a referee, I wouldn't have gave him a foul because he had no chance at making that No ball. chance at all <laughs> making that shot. No, that's, but it you was, know what? No, you know they tell big guys all the time, go hard to the rim, and good things happen. <laughs> he did, Matt, but he had no chance of dunking that one. Ilamane Dio. Born in Senegal, his family settled in Spain when he was a baby and now plays for Basconia in the ACB League, the top league in Spain I mentioned a moment ago. 6'11", 24 years of age. Now 14, and we talked about it, that Team USA, uh, they have 14 players right now. They still have to get down to 12, and question is, do you make the cuts before you take off for Australia? Or do you still take 14 or 13 guys going to Australia, Matt? It's going to be interesting what Team USA and Jerry Colangelo, Greg Popovich, and, and everybody involved decides to do. Well, there are basically two arguments, right? One is that you want to do it tonight after the game, maybe tomorrow morning, and let the two players who aren't going to be involved definitively get on with the rest of their summer, pre pre prepare themselves for camp with their NBA teams, the counter argument is, look at all the players that they have lost over the last few weeks. A couple of injuries away. And you don't want to be stuck in Australia or China and have to make a phone call and hope somebody can scramble to get on the roster. They have up until 48 hours before the first game against the Czech Republic on September 1st to finalize the 12-man roster. And then, as you know, if there's an injury beyond that, you just play on just with 11 or 10 or whatever you have left. Great pass. Great look from Yol. Xavi Rabaseda connects on the back end. And if you're Team USA, you had a big, comfortable lead, but you're still just up 10, and that definitely could change. you got to keep playing with your principles and understand this Spain team will come back, and Donovan Mitchell with a fantastic move and finish. Donovan Mitchell. Diop almost had the answer on the lob. He deserved a foul on that one. Inside to Plumley. Mason Plumley, one of just two players on this U.S. roster with senior men's national team experience. Harrison Barnes is the other. Walker. Man, he is so good. He's one of those guys you do not want to see coming at you full speed because of all his different dribble moves and quickness. He creates space quickly and easily. Walker knocks it down. He's got nine. Donovan Mitchell may have the full of the night so far. And 
the U.S. with a big lead here in the second quarter. Stay right here. Mitchell now two of four with five points. Substitution timeout. Victor Clapper checks in for Spain for Team USA. Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes back Harris. in the game for the U.S. Joe Harris is in. Victor Claver re-enters for Spain. Claver, one of the players on this team with NBA experience, three NBA seasons under his belt with with Portland. Spent the rest of his pro career in Spain. I mentioned most of these players spent almost their entire careers in Spain. Diop with the illegal screen, and now we'll take a break. 47-32. Red, white, and blue looking strong on their way out of the country. Cube 2000 gold medalist Steve Smith. Got a nice round of applause from the crowd here in Anaheim. I've uh, been around Team USA since 1989. I played in the Royal University Games in 94. Dream Team 2 in 2000 Olympics, 99 in a qualifying tournament in Puerto Rico. has been fantastic and fun. Served on the board, and I'll get a chance to call some games with you, Matt. So that means I'm getting old. <laughs> I was going to say that, that. That doesn't sound like the highlight of that resume, <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> Kino Colon hits the mid-range jumper for Spain. They're back within 13. What did you find the, the biggest challenges in terms of style of play or rules uh, to the international game, the FIBA game, when you moved from the NBA into those contests? You know, I think rules, it was definitely, um, I wouldn't say it was a rule, but the way internationally they set picks and the way they slid, physicality was fine with me. Uh, that shot doesn't that count. Shot doesn't count no. That zone gave the Team USA a little problem. Uh, and it wasn't really a rule for me, Matt. The basketballs, they were lighter, they were slippier visually because of the, the pattern of the ball with the leather and the white. Uh, it just felt different coming off your hand. There's a, a kind of a myth that the FIBA ball is, is smaller than the NBA ball. That they're not, they are not different sizes, but it does feel different to the touch. It feels lighter. It does feel lighter to me as well, and it, it feels. At once, it feels sort of tackier and sometimes slipper, slipperier mm -hmm. than the NBA ball. Jared? Yeah, Matt, I, I spoke to a couple of players about this yesterday at practice about the feel of the ball, and they said the issue is not necessarily how different it is from the NBA ball. They said this, the batch of balls they received from FIBA, each ball seems to be a bit different. Now, they're hoping once they get to China for the World Cup, each ball will be consistent. But there is parts of it that are a bit slipperier, as you guys were talking about, that they're getting it used to. But none of them have used it as an excuse. That's yeah, just something you got to get used to. It's part of the deal if you're going to play FIBA basketball. You have to play with their basketball. Some other rules is only five fouls and technical fouls. Also call count toward your personal fouls. Yep. The big difference is the goaltending rule. And it didn't come and play much, you know, when I played. No. And it, it usually doesn't. It doesn't come into play very often during the games. We'll get into that when we come back. There's a good look at that basketball, and it's going in more often for the Americans tonight. Play the Australian national team twice, and then face Team Canada before the World Cup begins formally. The first game, September 1st, against Tomas Sadoransky and the Czech Republic. Three more exhibition games here on NBA TV. Are you calling those, Smitty? I'm not. No. I'm are not you, either. Are you? It's a mystery at this point. Somebody will call. <laughs> Seoul couldn't connect on the fadeaway. And a foul on the U.S. USA foul on 47, Joe Harris. Joe Harris picks it up. You said at the top of the show, it's a marathon of traveling they have going to Australia Saturday. They won't arrive until Monday. Right. And then get a chance to have some practice and play those two exhibition games over there and then off to China. And when it's all said and done, if they make the finals or the semifinals, you're talking about about six weeks out of the summer. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, right when you come back, it'll be about another week, and they'll start right NBA training camp. Very quick turnaround for most teams for NBA training camp. And, and I think that was a difficult part. To the decisions a lot yep. of players have made this summer to pass on the World Cup. Tatum knocks down the three. It's a 16-point U.S. lead. Biggest of the night so far. And Jason Tatum, now two of seven from the field for eight points. Oh, 
you can see defensively, Team USA, I'm very impressed. Uh, there's a lot of help, a lot of communication from a team that hasn't been together long, doing a nice job. Great defensive stand from the U.S. It's a 24-second violation as Clubert wasn't aware of the time trying to drive baseline. Ran out the clock. 2.18 to go here before halftime. Fox back in the game for the U.S. For a lot of NBA players, you know, coming out of college, you've been in the league for a while, you don't play against a lot of zone, and that's sometimes a challenge. Uh, let's see the way Team USA handles, handles this zone from Spain on this possession. And remember in the international game, it's a zone without restrictions. You can stand anywhere you like for as long as you like. Rubio got hit in the face. And they'll call the foul on Jason USA Tatum. On Jason Tatum. Ricky Rubio off to Phoenix next season. For his ninth NBA year. After signing a big deal with the Suns. Three years, $51 million to finally resolve the point guard issue that they've yeah. been facing in the desert for years now. I think it's definitely going to help Devin Booker. Also, new coaching staff, Monty Williams, gets to take over. I think you'll see right away because of Coach Monty Williams, um, his style of coaching, also the way he connects with players and with Ricky Rubio. You'll see a better flow of their games. I just couldn't wrap my mind around the Phoenix Suns for the last two or three years. Who was a point guard, who was scoring, who was a small four. They had a lot of guys playing the same position. I think it'll get a little bit more clear uh, in the next few years with Coach Williams. One of the criticisms you heard of that signing is when, oh, they spent too much for Ricky Rubio, but this was a position that is been undefined and unfilled more or less for going on four years probably in Phoenix. Ricky Rubio is a point guard. That is what he does. He's a playmaker. See what he does defensively. And he will fill that role. They have a scorer in the backcourt. They have a big time scorer. Just didn't get a lot of publicity in Devin Booker because of the Phoenix Suns. We don't see them on national televised games and they're not winning games and making playoffs or even in a playoff run. But Devin Booker, is one of those guys that I turn on the TV because of his ability to score and make shots. Uh, I loved him playing point guard because it helps his games long term, but I didn't want to see him at that position. Right. Ricky Rubio back to the free throw line now. The youngest player to ever play in the Spanish League, the top league, the ACB. He played at the age of 14 in 2005, long before he ever came to the NBA. He's been playing at a high level. You said 14. Wow. The second, again, it's not official, but probably the second best league in the world at the age of 14. Also has nine medals with the national team. Just over a minute to go. 12-point lead for the U.S. Can't quite shake the Spaniards. Mitchell gets a pick from Turner, glides in and finishes with the right hand. Speed. Right now, Vantage Team USA, Mark Gasol was flat-footed when Donovan Mitchell came at him and had a beautiful finish. Seven points for Donovan Mitchell. Who Greg Popovich identified as an emerging leader on this roster along with Kemba Walker. Here's Rubio. Long two won't go. Harris has the rebound. Kuzma. Gasol got a hand in there, and apparently cleanly as Rubio brings it back for Spain. Rubio will put it up and in. Count the bucket for Ricky Rubio. Productive second quarter for Rubio, who now has 13 and a chance to make it 14. Nice job by him. You can see Donovan Mitchell. They played against each other. When a guy is driving, it's hard to bear the game momentum to stop, especially when it goes into your body. Smart play by Ricky Rubio. Average just under 13 points a game last season with the Utah Jazz. Rubio now 5 of 5 from the line and has 14 points to lead all scorers here. Played well from the start, and he's got his team hanging around down by 11. About seven seconds between game and shot clock here as Donovan Mitchell handles it for the red, white, and blue. Over to Joe Harris. Turn the corner. Gives it up to Turner. 
Another good dish from Joe Harris to set up Turner. Jaime Fernandez comes back the other way. Up to Gasol. Rudy Fernandez past Turner up. It won't go. And the U.S. goes to the locker room. Up 54 to 41. Chris Middleton led the Americans with 10 points on a for the Spanish, they will head back to Madrid to play the Dominican Republic on the 22nd, and then they'll play two pre-World Cup games in China, exhibitions against Argentina and Russia before they begin the tournament in Group C. There's Gasol working on Turner. Good job by Miles Turner, giving up some weight and size, but he stood his ground, was patient, and didn't gamble on the defensive end, just played straight up and stay big. Turner out to Middleton. Turner getting the start here in the third quarter after not starting in the, the first. See, he got moves, but he didn't go for the little pump fake, which is Mark is real crafty. Stayed big, kept his chest right on Mark, the numbers right on Mark's numbers, and contested without fouling. And obviously his length is a problem. The number one shot blocker in the NBA last season, nearly three a game, 2.7 to be exact for the Indiana Pacers. Mitchell leaks through out to Walker, passed on the three. Two on the shot clock now. And didn't get it off over Hernan Gomez, who kind of laughed about it, had something to say, I think, to Kemba the way back. Kind of messing with each other. 13-point lead right now. If you're a Team USA defensively, you want to come in and take away their execution and just methodically grind this one to a, a bigger lead for Team USA. Rubio turns the corner to set up Gasol, and that is turned away by Turner. Gasol gets it back and connects, but what a great reaction by Miles Turner defensively. Miles did a good job of being able to, one, he was out of position, but quickly a first step on defense to come back and been able to contest that and beautiful pass by Rubio. I like Rubio on the defensive end. He's done a nice job. Been a factor tonight for Team Spain. Here's that block and eventually bucket. You can see he's out of position, but boy, good job by him and he's got to stay in the play. Mark, it's kind of long in the tooth right now a little bit. <laughs> he never moved outside of the paint. He just stayed there and caught it, collected, and put it back in. 34 years of age. Never exactly an explosive type athlete, Marcus Ohl. You say average? Uh, below average. In terms of explosion, I would say below <laughs> average, yes. <laughs> Sergio Yol starting for Spain here in the third quarter. He handles it. Wear number 23. 31-year-old veteran. He's still, I guess, technically property of the Houston Rockets in the NBA. He was a second-round draft pick back in 09. But has consistently decided not to go over to the NBA. He's happy playing where he has played with Real Madrid, Spanish League champs from last season. In his home country, making a good living, playing pro ball. And I would say for the last, I would say 10 years, you've heard talk about how good he is, and I've witnessed it, and you said it best. I think now, not sure if he's still come over now, he's gotten a little bit older, but he's been consistently good for about a decade. Spent 14 years as a pro in the ACB, the Spanish League, 13 of those with Real Madrid. He is pretty well entrenched there. And he said, you know, the NBA will be there for me. I don't know how much longer it will be there for him at 31, but he's had his opportunities and chosen. Oh, the NBA will be there. Well, the NBA will be there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long it will be there for him. <laughs> right. But we have had instances in recent years with guys like Pablo Prigioni, who came over very, very late in his career. We saw Milos Tandosic come over to the L.A. Clippers a couple of seasons ago and never really got into a flow with L.A. He had some injury problems and headed back to Europe. U.S. likely to see Tandosic and the Serbian team at the World Cup. They are the second favorites behind the Americans. With Nikola Jokic, of course. He's had some success. A little bit. Interesting right now. You know, a lot of times, you know, 
teams are not running their offense, especially in ex exhibitions. Uh, they're just kind of coming out and playing. But if you're Spain, you still have pride. You want to get back in this game, put a little pressure on Team USA, who are up 11 right now. Pop talked about that with us, that for both teams, it's going to be very generic play calling offense. A lot of pick and roll, nothing specific. They're not going to show any out-of-bounds plays, that sort of thing, because these two teams could very well face each other late in the tournament in China. Perhaps when a medal is on the line. And I'm looking to see if, you know, throughout this game or throughout, you know, their journey and process, how much would Fox and Kimba play together, because that's a lineup. You have two guys that can break you down. And Gomez couldn't connect point blank. Kemba brings it back for the U.S. Plumley has it. Over to Mitchell now. Screen from Plumley. Floater from Mitchell is up and in. Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell. Now with nine points on four of seven shooting. Hey, he is so good with body control. Never gets knocked off balance because of his strength. Strong frame at 6-3. Rubio off on the jumper there. Keep an eye on the screen setting. And there's an illegal one by Barnes right on cue. But Pop has talked to us the last couple of weeks about talking to his players about what is acceptable in terms of screen setting on a feeble level. Because it is different than in the NBA. When for the most part, you really need to be fairly set when you set a screen. Yes. There's some movement allowed at the feeble level. A lot, man. And if you watch, it, we'll get a chance to see. They seek you out in a national play. They're not set strong. You can see they're kind of like in a constant movement. And sometimes it's hard, and that was a beautiful play by Spain from Rubio in the pass. But you don't know whether to switch or not because the guy is in constant motion, and he's not stopped setting the screen. Right. Pop joked last week he had to learn how to teach an illegal screen. <laughs> For these guys. Hernan Gomez defended by Tatum back out to Rubio, though. Yo, from deep. Sergio feeling it. Well, they're back in this game. Down Absolutely. Eight. See Greg Popovich calling the timeout and a little pep in their step from Team Spain. And I think having Sergio Yule and also Ricky Rubio gives them two guys that can find guys. It's very much a question moving forward. Jared Greenberg has caught up with him. Well, we're going to ask those questions, Matt, as we have Marcus with us. Uh, we want to know first, how are you feeling? How's the calf doing? Feeling great. You know, um, I've been doing my conditioning. I've been doing everything that the training staff asked me to. And every test that they've been putting me through and everything's been exceptional and it's been uh, wonderful. I'm just ready to get back out there. You know, Marcus, it, it feels like it would be easy for you just to say, I got to get ready for the NBA season and go home. What, what has made you stay with this team? Uh, that's not my makeup. You know, so I made a commitment to stay with these guys. You know, I, I, we work together, we, we sweat it, you know, we hurt together. So, you know, I'm in it, and I'm in it, and I'm in it for the long run. How confident are you that you'll be ready to play come the World Cup in a couple weeks in China? 100% confident. You know, and like I said, the Cavs feeling amazing. And, uh, you know, right now, you know, we're just taking it as slow and making sure I'm 100% get back out there. So much has been made of the four members of the Celtics that are here. Is that just cliche talk, or have you guys been able to utilize this time and gain some much-needed chemistry? Uh, we have. We, we, we have used this time to the chemistry, but, you know, it's been a – we all been enjoying the journey with these guys that, we you know, we don't get a chance to play with during the NBA season. But to have us four here and to be here with each other and go through this journey with each other is something that's going to help us with the NBA season coming around. Marcus, there was uh, also so much made of that scrimmage against the select team the other day, and obviously you couldn't participate, but we, we were told you were a very vocal leader from the sideline. How, what, what type of leadership style are you trying to show here with Team USA, and, and USA what went down the other day that implored you to be so uh, vocal? Uh, that's just me. This is how I've always been. You know, I'm a leader by example. And, you know, I talk, I, my, I have a, a very high basketball IQ, and, uh, you know, I just try to put my wisdom on these guys and things like that. And, you know, that scrimmage, you know, you know the select team did a good job, you know, and we needed that. You know, they, they showed us something that we were going to get used to, and that's getting our butts kicked and, and have to fight through that adversity. And uh, I love it. Do you think that had a direct impact on how the team is playing tonight? Definitely. We're coming out here, we're trying to play hard, we're trying to be physical, we're trying to be aggressive. And assert, and assert ourselves on both ends of the floor. And I think having that game against the select team helped us tremendously. Well, Marcus, best of luck in your rehab. We look forward to seeing you 
on the court in China. Thank you. All right, Matt, Marcus Smart of the Boston Celtics. All right, Jared, thanks very much. Marcus Smart, first team all defense last season. He brings a, an element to this roster that they obviously prioritize, and that's defense. And he brings a physical element, which they could use right now, because we got bodies flying all over the place here while Jared was talking to Marcus. Yeah, get a little physical, and you can see Team USA doing a nice job. The lead was cut down to eight. Now it's back up to 12, and Spain is figuring out if we could just keep playing, put a little pressure on them, get this thing down to maybe five or six. But right now it's blown back up to 12. Kyle Kuzma, five off the bench now. They leave it for Gasol. Can't hit the little five-footer. Tatum comes back, hung up at half court by Yol, who will pick up the foul. Derek White on the floor for the first time tonight. There's a buzz about him in the first week in Las Vegas. One coach told me he thought he was the best guard there in that week. He played for the select team last week. And here he is, having been promoted to the senior men's national team for the moment, trying to make this final 12-man roster. After last week's game, White and Marvin Bagley were both promoted, and then Bagley withdrew to concentrate on the upcoming season. You know, Derek Wright has done such a good job, and you look at his great size for a point guard. In his two seasons, he's averaged 8.5 points, 48%. Um, started a lot of games for the San Antonio Spurs and played well in the playoffs um, versus the Denver, Denver Nuggets. So kudos to him. He's one of those solid players, and I'm telling you, the San Antonio Spurs are going to be pretty good next year. White had a breakout series against the Nuggets, as you mentioned, including a 36-point game three. Seven straight points now for the U.S. Jalen Brown was pretty quiet as a starter last week, but he's producing here off the bench for the U.S. so far tonight. Brown's four or five with nine points. Done a good job, and you know, he has talent. It's just finding out his rhythm on the offensive end. He's one of those guys that can get going, and sometimes, you know, I think he's a little bit unselfish, too unselfish on the offensive end. He kind of lets the game come to him, but I think his talent, he could be a little bit more aggressive because he makes the right plays. Claver affected that shot by Derek White. Here comes Spain. Trailing again by 15. Rudy Fernandez, the venerable one. Over to Ricky Rubio. Try the floater. He's fouled in the, in the act, and we'll go to the free throw line. USA mentioned Fernandez and his history with Team Spain, 213 career games with the national team. By comparison, Carmelo Anthony has played the most in U.S. senior men's national team history with 31. <laughs> I mean, Rudy seems like he's been around for like 25 years, huh? <laughs> Rudy's 34. Had some great moments with Spain, including, remember that dunk against Dwight Howard? in the 2008 Olympic gold medal game. There's a look at Rudy. Four years in the NBA, three with Portland, one with Denver. He had a very nice rookie year, averaging double digits, 10.4 points. Um, I thought he was solid. Athletic wing player, first round pick of the Phoenix Suns back in 2007. Rubio will check out as Kino Colon comes in. Colom is the only player on this team who doesn't play in either the Spanish League or the NBA. He plays in Turkey. Mm, little pressure. Pressure, and they got away with it for the moment. White hounded by Colom, nearly lost it. Through his legs, did lose it. Colom forces the turnover. It's been a problem tonight for the U.S. That is their 15th, compared to only five for the Spaniards. Right defensive now. persistence by Cologne. Cologne doing a nice job. You can see the pressure. Derek Wright, I think the ball a little slippery. <laughs> and also that little physicality pressure he's putting on Derek Wright. Cologne was born in the Principality of Andorra, which is wedged between Spain and France. Population under 80,000. And he was just beaten by Derek White. Derek White on the board for the first time tonight. Good drive from the San Antonio Spurs guard. Derek did a nice job of not playing with the defender and driving it hard. Here's Rebots. Deep two off the back rim. And off Kuzman will stay with Spain. 
can see. That's the one if you're Derek White, you're saying, hey, Brooke Lopez, can you call that one out? Right, yeah. Can you say something? And that's not even a questionable screen. No, that's that a good was NBA a good screen. screen. Yeah. Fernandez for three. Rudy knocks it down. Three-pointer for Rudy Fernandez. His first bucket of the night. Harris off the screen into the paint. And it's knocked away by Willie Hernandez. Hernan Gomez, excuse me. Middleton will come back in for the U.S. Four or five, ten points so far. Also has three assists for the United States. Brooke Lopez in as well. White inbound. Pick up for somebody. Middleton will grab it. Good job defensively from Spain. White into the teeth of that D. Can't quite get that to fall. Out to Cologne. Just over a minute 30 now here in the third quarter and a 12 point game. Cologne. Hernan Gomez. Brooke Lopez defended it well. Brooke showing his size. Nowhere to go for Gomez. Good job of moving it. Good. This is good basketball. Right to Lopez. Good two-man game. Lopez producing on both ends in that sequence. A block on one end and the dunk on the other to make it a 14-point margin. I thought Brooke Lopez had his best defensive season in the NBA last year. Not just blocking shots, although he did that really well as Fernandez starting to heat up here. The veteran with another three-pointer. Spain missed their first five threes. They've hit seven of 13 since. Fernandez thought he had a steal there. He did. Good job. Uh, Derek White, and you see the pass to Brooke Lopez. Brooke did a nice, I mean, he was so good. And now he's getting a chance to play with his brother Robin next That's year. right. Brooke Lopez became the first player in NBA history Brooke to Lopez. average two made threes and two blocks a game. Last season as a Milwaukee Buck and cashed in this summer with a free agent deal to stick around Milwaukee. Four year, $52 million deal. You know, he, he wasn't a focal point on offense, as, as you know, but he was so huge for all those guys because of the spacing at right. the five position. Key cog for the Milwaukee Bucks and, and the way they played, having their best record in the NBA last year. Hit 187 threes, most ever by a seven footer. Here's Colon with White in front of him. Down to Hernan Gomez, disrupted by White. Good activity by White. Good look at Derek, the 25 year old. Amazing story to reach the NBA. First three seasons in Division II at Colorado, Colorado Springs before he transferred to Colorado for a season. And wound up playing for Greg Popovich and the San Antonio Spurs. Cologne wanted the foul, doesn't get it. Shot clock off for the U.S. White was also the only player on this roster who participated in the qualifying round for the U.S. Playing with mostly G-leaguers, he played a couple of those 12 games. As Jeff Van Gundy had to cobble together a roster over and over again. Middleton, before the buzzer won't fall. But the U.S. will take a 13-point lead. Make some noise in the Western Conference. Mike Conley and Boyan Bogdanovich give the Jazz now three guys who could have 20 on any given night. Hasn't been the case for a while in Utah. Third quarter underway here after a 17-17 third quarter, fourth quarter underway, I should say. Spain, remember, cut it to eight at 58-50. U.S. has never been able to completely pull away. Rudy Fernandez, a couple of threes in that third quarter. Can't get the shot off there. Good job defensively by Harrison Barnes. And a shot clock violation for Spain. Good job of Chris Middleton and also Harrison Barnes. The versatility, both those guys could switch. that 2-4 pick and roll. Turner to Middleton. Fernandez, guard. Barnes has it. 
tried the reverse at the bottom part of the rim. Back comes Spain. Kino Colom handles. Into the paint, floater is up and good for Kino Colom. <laughs> it's just a floater. He stopped and no one came and kind of shot it off his wrist. He's two of three, four points now. Commits a foul on the other end. Let's watch this, man. He gets into the lane. Drives it, no one's there. <laughs> he kind of shoots it from the hip. Nice shot. Good, good touch. It's not an easy shot. It looks easy because it's close, but it's not easy. Nope. It's an awkward range. Shoot a floater. As many of you know as a point guard, you got to make that decision, right? You turn the corner, you deal with what's there or not there in that Chris case. Middleton. Middleton answers with the jumper. U.S. lead is 13. Chris Middleton now 5 of 7. He's got 12 points that leads the U.S. USA fouls on 57. Chris Middleton. That's Middleton will pick up the foul first. on the perimeter. It's his second. Five fouls in the FIBA game in a 40-minute game. Wow, Donovan Mitchell is getting through screens extremely well. Good pass. This time Cologne up top, but... Hernan Gomez couldn't connect on the dunk. Middleton in transition, looking for Turner down low. It's disrupted by Oriola, and Pierre Oriola will pick up the foul. Plays his pro ball in Barcelona. I wonder if we're going to see De'Aaron Fox anymore. He hasn't played in a while. I'm still looking for him and Kimba to match up together. Only played six minutes here so far. Made an impact last week, that's for certain. And obviously, Pop and his coaching staff is trying to find chemistry, trying to look at a lot of different combinations. He's rotated a lot of guys in and out. Fox put up 12 points, three boards, three assists, three steals, and two blocks in 15 minutes last week. This is the backcourt most expect to see when the World Cup begins in China. Walker and Donovan Mitchell. Walker knocks down the short Kemba little jumper. Walker. Kemba is now 4 of 5 for 11 points. He's done a nice job. He has six assists. Been able to score and not taking a lot of possessions. He's doing a good job defensively. Cologne with a screen from Hernan Gomez. And that was one of the moving variety screens that are allowed in the FIBA game. Mitchell. Do not count the bucket. Foul is on the floor. He is so strong. I mean, Donovan laid wood to the defender, driving at full speed. Watch this. Nice little bump and finish from Donovan Mitchell. The NBA, that might have counted. That would have, for sure. Made his move. He'd begun his move. It'll be a side out here. Kemba with a screen from Turner. Mitchell for three. Got it. Three Donovan and Mitchell. Now with a dozen. He's hit two of three from the great beyond. Fernandez up top. Hernan Gomez over his head. That was nice. Empty catch and finish. He didn't try to dunk that one. From Willie Hernan Gomez. Had to finesse the business end of that alley-oop. Turner's become an active screen setter here. Slipped that one. Campbell went all the way to the rim, but couldn't finish the play. Ricky Rubio, really good in that first half. Pretty quiet so far here in the second. Interesting shot. It is. It is. Three pointer. It's Oriola. Oriola knocking that one down. He's hit it. I think that's his second one. That is his second made three of the night. In fact, he's three of three for eight points. A little zone by Spain trying to change the momentum and rhythm from Team USA. Kemba over to Barnes to the corner for Harris. Spain Great goes close the scouting out. report. They're all over Harris. Gets away from him. Here's Rebos to finish it off for Spain. 
It's been a persistent problem for the U.S. tonight. Points off turnovers. It's been a huge advantage for Team Spain. In fact, in large part, what kept them in this game. And they're back within 11. Smitty and Spanish aren't going away anytime they soon. They're not. Couple more buckets and their confidence is going up higher. Once again, within 11 points now. The U.S. has now given up 24 points on 18 turnovers, Smitty. Yeah, those turnovers is something that, you know, obviously Team USA has to address. Other than that, they have played well, but Spain is staying in this game because of the turnovers. They're back in that zone, and it's yet another turnover on Q. Make it 19 now for the U.S. Still with five minutes to go here in the game. Rubio to Oriolo has knocked down a couple of threes tonight. Ricky Rubio with 16 points. Inside, Oriola is fouled as he gets up the shot. An offensive set from Team Spain. Great and job Oriola by him. Got away. On the weak side, everybody's watching the pick and roll. He just dove USA extremely hard, and cut and without it. Team USA flat-footed, gave up that cut, and Greg Popovich is talking to Donovan Mitchell, putting in Jason Tatum right now. And still a big lead, but it is five minutes and 26 seconds left. A little concern from Team USA. So Oriola to the line, 6'9", 26 years of age, plays for Barcelona professionally. For last season, he averaged just under seven points a game on 50% shooting. He spent his entire 10-year pro career in the Spanish ACB. Number two in the world, Spain. Medals at the last three Olympics, including a bronze in 2016 and silvers in 2012. And 2008, now a 7-0 run here to close the gap. Again, to 11. Harris caught up in the air there and sends it to White. Scouting report by Spain. Do not give him an open yeah, shot. They, they, they find Joe Harris when he finds when the ball makes its way to him. U.S. finds Kyle Kuzma for the bucket. Now it's back to 13. Sol up top, such a great playmaker for Team Spain. Here's Rubio. Drifting to his left, no good because Sol there for the cleanup. Mark just cleaning out space. Ten points on fourth ten for Gasol. Kuzma can't hit there. Pretty big possession right now for Spain on the offensive end. You want to score now. It's four minutes and 31 seconds left. You got to get this to single digits pretty soon. Juan Hernan Gomez has it. Back to Rubio. Five of the shot clock. Rubio out to Gasol. Here's Yol. Sergio Yol knocks down the three. And it is an eight-point lead. Yol, talk, three of five from three-point range. He's got 11. Man, I talk about that offensive possession for Spain. They answered. Right now, if you're at USA, you don't want to get a live ball turnover and give up an easy bucket. Harris. Knocks it down. That's why he's out there. That changes the zone defense tremendously when you have a guy like Joe Harris. You can see the defender had, got sucked in but couldn't get back out to Joe Harris. He's been waiting all night to get one off. That was his first three attempts because they've done such a good job closing out on him. There's White at the rim. He finishes off that play. And the lead is back to 13 with three and a half minutes to go. Such a tough job to be a knockdown three-point shooter. You may have to wait all night long to get an opportunity like Joe Harris just did. We should the night. The U.S. has led by as many as 18, but Spain has cut it to single digits on multiple occasions here in the second half. And now with three and a half to go, trail it by 13. Here's Gasol guarded by Plumley in the post. Turned right into Plumley, no foul call. Rightly so. Just lost the ball. Tatum in the corner now. And it's good. Man, that kid is good. I mean, Jason Tatum. Game is smooth. He got his feet set. And there's Marcus Gasol shooting a three. Answer from Gasol. The U.S. has now matched the last week's total with 11 made threes tonight. Spain is 10 of 22 from three point range. Kemba into the teeth of the Spanish defense to Tatum. Leaves it for Plumley. Oh, Hernan Gomez up over the top of him. And Plumley is fouled before he could flip that ball up over his head.
I mean, just look at Tatum catch this one. Shot pocket. Great rotation. Splash. And Tatum, between last Friday and this Friday, is at 5 of 8 from three-point range. And you saw how well he played in the playoffs the year before. And he was solid this year. Um, it just didn't seem like he got into a rhythm this year. He didn't play bad, but I'm looking forward to Jason Tatum having a big year for the Celtics this year. Well, to be fair, that, that seemed true for most of the Celtics as a franchise last year. Whatever was going on, whether it was a locker room issue or team chemistry issue, something to do with that rotation that Brad Stevens was trying to work out, it just, it just wasn't happening for the Celtics last year. Rubio probing over Lopez. Can't get the banker to fall. 2.20 to go. U.S. up 88-75. Tomorrow night, they get on a plane for the long plane ride to Australia. It's a long ride, man. Beautiful country, though. 20th turnover of the night. A moment ago for the U.S. Here's Yol. Couldn't finish over Lopez. Walker working on Yol. To Lopez, stripped by Hernan Gomez, and he'll get the foul. <laughs> I mean, Matt. Kimmel reminds me of Barry Sanders with a stop the yeah. L football wise and on the basketball court. He's so low, he's the center of gravity, and he's so explosive. Uh, defensively, you, you can't stay in front of him because his jump shot has gotten so uh, easy, shoots it with ease, and now I think he's going to be. More explosive with the Boston Celtics with all the guys that can play. It's time for the best player of the game, sponsored by AT&T. And while we're talking about Kemba Walker, why not him? He's got eight assists to go with his 11 points on four of six shooting. I thought he had a nice floor game. Did a good job of just running the show. You can see six field goals, 11 points, eight assists. And you know he could take over any time offensively, but I think he's doing a nice job of just getting guys involved. And the U.S. as a team is doing exactly what Greg Popovich has been preaching with ball movement. They have 24 assists now on 34 made baskets tonight. And he talked about it. He said he's been trying to get those guys just because they don't know each other well. But chemistry-wise, just be around each other. And it's, it's important outside of basketball. You're just hanging around and you start to gain that trust. I mentioned earlier that Pop told us that Walker and Mitchell have emerged as team leaders. And for this group, which is so young and so inexperienced at the FIBA major competition level, that's going to be an important job for this team. It is. I mean, you'll have some adversity. And then you have the guys that are vocal leaders, lead by example, but also guys that just keeps you going and stay positive and also not afraid to call out the team, call out themselves when you're not playing well and just that motivation from players and you don't always want to hear from coaches. Brooke Lopez to the line, his first miss from there in three tries. The U.S. is only 9 of 13 from the free throw line. Haven't missed much from the field or the three-point line, so they haven't been to the free throw line a ton. Lopez one of two. Back to 14, and Brooke has eight on the night. Rubio with 16 for Spain, gives it up for Gasol. Hand off to Yol. Good ball movement, good player movement. And Rubio will take the free throw line, jumper, it won't fall for him. Mitchell comes away with the board. has been his Achilles heel throughout his career. Ricky Rubio, just not a great shooter. No, he's not. I mean, uh, he'll go on spurts like the beginning of the game where he looked comfortable knocking down shots and a nice arch. And then in his second half, he's just been flat. All his shots have been flat. And he had some easy looks in his half. 40% last year with Utah, 31% from three. That was down 4% from his best three-point shooting season, which was 17-18. And career... 32% from three-point range. Does a lot of things well, but he is not an elite shooter. Donovan Mitchell, 5 of 9, 12 points. 
and hits his second free throw attempt of the night. He's got 13, which leads the U.S. at this point. Rubio leads all scores with 16. Spain throws it away. And it's window dressing from yeah, it is. this point on. Very solid outing for Team USA. Tatum, baseline, threw it to a spot. <laughs> Middleton chased it down. Screen from Lopez, they look inside, and the U.S. turns it over for the 20th time tonight. Gasol for three. Marcus Gasol now with 16. Ties Rubio from the team lead. And with 53 seconds and change to go. We've got a timeout on the floor. The U.S. in control. Up yeah, and between Spain and Serbia, and obviously France are good. It, you can go either way, but uh, Serbia is one of those teams that you they, they have extreme talent. I think if you look at Spain, they have talent, but I think they have more chemistry and continuity. Uh, it's going to be interesting. And the Serbian team has more young talent, yes. perhaps, with Jokic and Bogdan Bogdanovic. U.S. putting the finishing touches on Spain here tonight, up by a dozen. The soul got a piece of that. It'll stay with the U.S. The soul's not the only member of this team to win a championship with the Raptors. Their head coach, Sergio Scariolo, is an Italian, but an assistant under Nick Nurse last season. In fact, the Raptors allowed him to lead the team to go coach the Spanish national team during the World Cup qualifying process. Yeah, 28 seconds left. Spain still playing. Gasol, given 19 on the night. Gasol with his third main three. It's a nine point game. Spain out of time here. Rubio goes flying. It's an offensive foul as Ricky Traveled about 20 USA feet on the floor. You can see Jason Tatum. Let me see a little push off. Yep. Is that left arm? Ricky wound up on the baseline after all that. Soul. Already hit three threes. Chased off the line that time. Rubio will try it. Air ball. The U.S. can run out the clock. It's a final, USA a lot to like about the U.S. tonight. Defensively, ball movement, shooting as well as for the second straight Friday night. They An attempt by Minnesota to get an offensive presence in the low post. They're going to challenge Shaq. And someone stepped in too quickly. Jim Clark indicating that it will be Los Angeles ball. Remember last game, Shaq stole the opening tip. This time, they call it on Minnesota. And it appeared that uh, Kevin Garnett attempted to steal it. But Jim Clark was right on the scene. So the Lakers, with the opening possession, they get it right to O'Neal. Over over a candy, rebounded by Garnett. A little bit further out than he's normally used to shooting that shot. Perhaps two to three feet longer trying to bank it off the glass. Derek Martin played by Gary Payton. Payton got picked off. Now Garnett, double team. All over candy, shot clock, down at two. It's gonna be important for him to get off to a good three games to two as we head back to Los Angeles for game six. The Forum in Inglewood, California, where the 1987 NBA championship will be decided either this afternoon in number six or Tuesday night in number seven.
CBS Sports welcomes you to its continuing coverage of the 87 NBA Finals. It's one of the great rivalries in all of sports. It's the Celtics and the Lakers, and again, these two great basketball franchises have reached number six in this championship series. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger, and it's Seve Ballesteros and J.C. Sneed get underway in that sudden death playoff. We will keep you up to date, but you will stay right here in the forum. You will not miss a single point at halftime. We'll bring you any important shots that you do not see, too. Now, to get you up to date on game six, let's go down to Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn. Dick? All right, Brent, there are two key players on each club who've been fighting injuries. Michael Cooper, you know, suffered that stra strained knee in a collision with Dennis Johnson. He worked out, not 100%, but he'll give it a go. Danny Ainge yesterday sprained an ankle, landing on Robert Parrish in practice, and that's hurting him to a great degree, but he too is starting and will try and give it the full go. I hear from Dr. Tom Silver of the Celtics that Bill Walton is the healthiest he has been all season long. Tommy Heinsohn, let's talk about the tempo which the Celtics had controlled in the three games in Boston. The Lakers really started this series running real hard. The Celtics stopped them up in Boston, took that run game away from them. The half-court game became more prevalent. The matchups, I think, they now know who they can beat up on. I think Magic Johnson can do a tune on any of the Celtic guards, and the Celtics have been going at A.C. Green. What about the timing of the substitutions off the bench by these coaches? The first substitution for each coach, very important. When Michael Thompson comes in, that slows the Lakers down. They don't have his quote of a potent a fast break. And Kite, very important to stop the fast break of the Lakers. All right, Tommy and Brent, the Lakers are so glad they're back home in the friendly confines of the Forum. No, exactly right, Dick. The Lakers unbeaten at home here in the Forum. And you know the Celtics have really not played that well on the road in the playoffs. Now Las Vegas has listed the Lakers as a 10-point favorite in this game. And the Celtics are determined to prove that they are wrong and push this into a seventh game, which will be played on a Tuesday night. So coming up, it's game six. The crowd here at the Forum awaits the introduction of the starting lineups. Let's go to our public address announcer, Lawrence Tanner. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Forum for game six of the 1987 NBA Finals. Now let's meet the starting lineups. First for the Eastern Conference champions, the Boston Celtics. At guard, in his 11th season from Pepperdine, number three, Dennis Johnson. At guard, in his sixth season from BYU, number 44, Danny Ainge. At center, in his 11th season from Centenary, double zero, Robert Parrish. season from Minnesota, number 32, Kevin McHale. Also at Ford, been his eighth season from Indiana State, number 33, Larry Bird. And the head coach for the Celtics in his fourth season, Casey Jones. Now for the Western Conference champions, the Los Angeles Lakers. Forward in his fifth season from North Carolina, number 42, James Worthy. At forward in his second season from Oregon State, number 45, A.C. Green. At guard in his fourth season from Arizona State, number four, Byron Scott. Eighth season from Michigan State, number 32, Urban Magic Johnson. And at center, the captain in his 18th season from UCLA, number 33, Kareem Abdul Kadar. And the head coach for the Los Angeles Lakers in his sixth season, Ed Riley. the officials working today's sixth game Daryl Garrettson and Joe Crawford the alternate is Ed Rush so the Boston Celtics who took two out of three on their home court out rebounded the Lakers and outshot LA but now they're back to the forum and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Larry Bird who wants to keep it going for the Celtics and to keep you up to date on the Westchester Classic the sudden death playoff is underway. Sevi Ballesteros' tee shot went into the rough. He's tied with J.C. Sneed. 
as they begin on the 10th hole. But Tommy, I know that matchups will play a very important role in this game because the teams have had five games to see what works and what doesn't. It's been a dance stick. Whichever team has controlled the tempo has really won the game, uh, with the exception perhaps of the one game the Lakers took in Boston. But the Lakers want to run, and they have really four fast people. They probably will key more on four on three situations than they have in the past. The, the Celtics have to key on their shot selection, not take poor shots. Interestingly enough, they outran the Lakers and outscored them on the fast break in game five. But it's game six. We're underway. The Lakers need one to wrap it up. And we're going to re-jump. With a taped ankle covered by his stocking. Good pass into Kareem. And a quick 2-0 lead for L.A. Can't get better position than Kareem got on that little pick. Forced McHale to switch over on him. Dennis Johnson has his shot blocked by Kareem. Here's Worthy. The block shot by Kareem, and he leads everybody in that department, and James Worthy hasn't done that since game two here in L.A. He's back airborne again, James Worthy. Paris, the offensive rebound with a high-arcing shot off of Kareem, and the 40-year-old Abdul-Jabbar hustles for it. It'll be Boston ball. Dennis Johnson makes a good drive along the baseline line, but the real hustle of Kareem knocks it away and saves two and started a very important fast break. Double team on McHale. Larry Bird misses his first shot. Here's Scott. Dennis Johnson gets back and plays Scott well. Magic goes flying. Magic posting up inside. A.C. Green comes in. The ball batted away. It might have been McHale who got a hand on it. Meanwhile, it's three on three for Boston, and Dennis Johnson is fouled going in. Ballesteros, the second shot, hit a tree, and he is in immediate trouble on the first hole of sudden death at the Westchester. Meanwhile, Dennis Johnson is on the line, and the personal foul is on Worthy. And Tommy Worthy missed his first five shots in each of the last two games before opening up the scoring. Fast break points are very important for James Worthy's psyche, I think. And he got off and flying a jam on the front end of a fast break. But Boston, importantly, came back on a fast break themselves and took it right at Magic Johnson. So they are certainly willing to run. And despite Ainge's problems, this may be the healthiest the Celtics have been all playoffs. Magic's pass to Worthy finally got through. A minute and a half gone by, first period. Worthy, so far, looks like a different player at home. Pat Riley certainly wanted to get James Worthy off early and get his game incorporated into a winning effort. Top score in the playoff for the Lakers, but not against the Celtics. Bird is 0 for 2 now. A.C. Green the rebound. It's a 4 on 4 and 5 for the Lakers as they settle half court. Worthy, defense by McHale now. Yep, they want to get him off early. He has listened to enough about what happened to James Worthy. He's saying right now, nothing happened to James Worthy. All right, that's the story from the Westchester. And Tommy, so far, this is reminiscent of game one when the Lakers moved in front nine to nothing en route to a route. They certainly have the streakers out in the front end of that fast break, particularly James Worthy. He's getting out there quick. And McHale connects, and the Celtics hit their first shot with two and a half minutes gone by in game six. The Celtics have been going directly at A.C. Green with Kevin McHale. He is not big enough to defend against McHale. Magic goes off the mark, and the rebound by McHale. Ainge on the wing. 
And the reason they want to go at A.C. Green is that they want to eliminate that speed aspect and force the Lakers to go to Michael Thompson. If they can get A.C. Green out of the game, that's a big plus in slowing the game down. Byron, this is a left-handed shot. He's struggling from the field, and here's a three-on-one. Byron Scott. He's the other guy who is ice cold in Boston, along with James Worthy. Anytime Bird, Dennis Johnson, or Ainge drives to the basket and they miss, they leave only two people back in the backcourt to defend against the Laker fast break. They're capitalizing on that right now. McHale against Green. There's the matchup. The Celtics taking advantage. McHale hits the basket and a foul as well. And E.C. Green picks up the first and the second team foul. Here's the Celtic advantage. A.C. Green not beefy enough to really move McHale out of that sweet spot down there. Even though Kareem comes over to help out, it's a little bit too late. Kevin McHale, who has been big on the boards the last three games, particularly off the offensive glass, brings the Celtics to within three. Kareem. Foul before the shot against Robert Parrish. Tommy, in the two Celtic wins, Parrish got into foul trouble, and yet the Celtics won nonetheless. Casey Jones rotated uh, Greg Kite in there, and he's a key part of getting back and stopping a Laker fast break. And he also will manhandle Kareem a little bit, which wears a 40-year-old man down. Magic posting up against Ainge. Misses the hook shot. Larry Bird, the trailer is Dennis Johnson, gave up the shot. Parrish in better position, and he's fouled. So Larry Bird struggling from the start as he's had so many times in this series, and in fact in the playoffs. This is what he's done the last three games, 0 for 13, and he's yet to hit one today. Celtics offense, though, Dick, is primarily a low post offense. At trying to get Bird hitting some outside shots to pull the defense out to uncover Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale. And if he doesn't hit that shot, the Laker defense will be able to cover up those two big guys in the Celtics. Lakers were particularly disturbed, Tommy, at the fact that they've been double teaming McHale and Parrish, and yet both are hitting over 60%. Each one of the Lakers front court has a personal foul. One point lead after the big start by the Lakers. And they call the foul on Parrish, and that'll be number two on the Celtics' big man. And Casey Jones has it a quick decision to make. Very, very smart play by Pat Riley when they do not have the fast break to go to Kareem to get one of the real fine offensive rebounders the Celtics possess, the chief, Robert Parrish, out of the lineup. And as we said at the outset, not only is Greg Kite available, and he has played well in the two Boston wins, but Bill Walton, Maybe this healthiest, and he also is a possibility. Becoming a series of picking on people, and you can select with that half-court offense who you want to face the ball, and both coaches doing that. Ten to nine, and the Celtics are looking for their first lead of the ball game. And Larry Bird gives it to him with 7:35 remaining, and the first basket after three misses by Bird. An interception by Parrish and Ainge ahead of the field and Kareem basket hanging comes back so the Lakers trailing by one blocked by Parrish and here's Dennis Johnson guarded by Scott he goes by him and the Celtics lead by three Kareem and Parrish wasn't about to pick up his third foul smart no contest that time by Robert Parrish. Bird came over to help out, but Kareem is getting it done for the Lakers. Celtics have run off nine in a row now, and Dennis Johnson makes it 11 with just under seven minutes remaining. A.C. Green. Robert Parrish getting back so quickly gave them five defenders against four Lakers. Green open. And McHale, the rebound for the Celtics. 15 to 12, Boston. Dennis Johnson. And right now, the after the early spurt 
the Lakers have quieted down and the Celtics have dictated the tempo. They've taken the run away from the Lakers. They started out quickly, but they haven't been able to maintain that fast break. And Michael Thompson gets off the bench for the Lakers. Byron Scott, one for 12 from three-point range, misses again. And this crowd is quieted down considerably. And if you're the Celtics, that's exactly what you want to do. Harris and Boston now on a 15-2 run. And Pat Riley wants the timeout. So after an early six-point lead, the Celtics are up by seven in a dramatic turn here in the opening period. Bill Walton has come into the ball game for the Celtics replacing Robert Parrish. So a surprise early substitution. Walton not tight. And it is still Lakers ball as the Celtics have run off a 15 to 2 advantage to take a seven point lead. Walter Matthau who's been a basketball fan long before it was fashionable to just be seen here at the Forum Town. Scott missed. The importance of Walton coming into the ball game really is whether he will be able to get back fast enough on the defense to protect against the Laker fast break. Kite could do that, but Walton perhaps can defend against Kareem a little bit better. James Worthy misses. Michael Thompson throws a bad shot off the glass and then converts on a second chance. And Michael Thompson, who had three productive games offensively and has played Mikhail well, and it's a five-point Boston lead. And Michael Cooper gets off the bench. The injured Laker. And now Walton is called for an offensive foul. And here's Michael Cooper coming back, making his first appearance. And certainly he is very important for the Lakers. That outside shot may help open up things for the Lakers. Larry Bird is guarding Matt, uh, Michael Thompson, but sloughing off and just guarding the middle. No basket and a foul called against the Celtics. It'll be their third team foul and the first against McHale. So each team with three fouls now. Each uh, the Celtics want to show different looks defensively to the Lakers. Get them guessing a little bit. They played them a lot one on one in the prior games and the doubles, the timing on the doubles were different from game to game. Worthy doubled with Ainge. Ainge makes a terrific play. He came along the blind side, knocked the ball away, and Danny Ainge. And Ainge and Magic collide, and a loose ball foul called against Ainge. Here's Magic coming for the rebound, and takes it away from Bird, and Ainge just trying to get his hand in there, and knocks Magic down in the process. The crowd has been kept quiet early in this first period. You're watching the 1987 NBA Finals, and Tommy Heinsohn, if you're a team on the road, there's nothing more you'd rather do than to quiet the crowd. Dennis Johnson getting off strong. Kareem has kept the Lakers in the game, and Magic hasn't gotten on track yet. They have uh, cut off Magic's penetration, the Celtics. Great kite in for the Celtics right now. That has been very important, the cutoff of Magic's penetration, and they've also forced them to a longer hook shot. Rambis in for the Lakers, but the Celtics have made the bulk of the substitution. Seasting in the backcourt. Greg Kite is in at center, and Darren Day is in at forward. So McHale is getting a rest right now. And a smallish team is in there for the Celtics, and a quicker one. Doesn't get the runner, and Greg Kite tips in. And for Greg Kite, that is his second field goal in nine tries in this series. Seasting fouls. On Danny Ainge's penetration, they have to move the back line of the defense. That frees Kite up, and he steps inside Michael Thompson for not exactly an easy tip. Seasting is guarding Cooper. And that could be good post-op opportunities for Cooper. James Worthy gets the basket and draws the foul. That is a very definite plus matchup for the Lakers. Worthy being guarded by Darren Day. He is not nearly big enough to stop Worthy. And just the speed of Worthy, Darren Day can probably match that, but the leaping ability and the long arms of Worthy leaves Day at a disadvantage. 
They was in in one of the games in Boston. One shot guarding Worthy, and after that, he came out of the ball game. He's in there again to give it a shot. Meanwhile, the Lakers are one for five from the free throw line, and they're trailing now by seven. And the more the Celtics big guys, McHale and Parrish are on the bench, the more difficult it will be for the Lakers to use the pace as a fatigue factor. Seaskin, missing and Rambus tips it, and a foul call against the Lakers, and it'll be Rambus' first. And Tommy, the Celtics have taken the lead in this game despite the fact that Larry Bird has scored only four points. They have moved to the strength, which has been the inside game. Parrish and McHale. And a couple of great shots by Dennis Johnson. There goes Bird with a runner. Rambus and Day bats down the pass. Magic pushing it up five on four. Cooper, Bird's got to play him tough at three-point range. Three. Seasting guarding Magic Johnson. And an offensive foul called against Magic, who has gone up against... Well, that's an eight-inch height advantage on Jerry Seasting. Jerry Seasting does the intelligent thing. He takes the blow. When you're smaller than the man in the low post, you better do a little acting, and he got away with it. Two fouls on Magic. Magic and Michael, each with two. That's Michael Thompson. Worthy and Bird isolate. Bird puts a good move on James Worthy. No basket. And an offensive foul called against Larry Bird. He put the move on. Maybe that's why he put the move on. He is a, a master of faking with the ball. You may not go for one, two, but he'll throw three or four at you, and finally, you bite. Magic Johnson sits down with only two points and doesn't look happy at all. Byron Scott replaced him. Worthy's posting up against Day. Height on Scott on a switch. In the hands of Bird, lost it to Rambus, who drew the foul. Tommy Michael Thompson was all alone inside, and the Lakers missed him. I tell you, that's a sign of frustration by Scott. He wanted to make something happen for himself, and he just turned down Michael Thompson dead in the corner with nobody in him, uh, nobody around him, and he takes the ball right to the teeth of the Celtic defense, and Rambus, with a lot of hustle, picks up the ball off the floor. That's going down and getting it in a meaningful way. And the Lakers talk about frustration. Way off at the line as Dennis Johnson replaces Danny Ainge. That personal, by the way, was on Darren Day, and the Celtics have three team fouls. The Lakers only one with two minutes gone by in the second. <laughs> Biggest lead was seven by Boston after that early flurry by the Lakers. It looked like they were off to the races. The Celtics just clamped down. Off the screen, Seasting. Loose ball, Day has it, and a foul against Boston. Greg Kite picks up his second foul. So all three Boston centers, Parrish, Kite, and Walton, have two fouls. An incredible parallel to what happened last year when Boston was the kingpin against Houston. This was game one. All right, the Celtics won by 12. This year, the Lakers won by 13. Then a blowout. So two substantial victories by the home team in the first two games. Then they moved to game three, and Houston got back in it. So did Boston, but close games. Game four, it became a 3-1 series in close games. And then in game five, Houston won big, and Boston won big, and the points are all even in the margin. And in game six... A year ago, the Boston Celtics won by 17 over Houston to take the championship. A lot of eerie parallels to last year. Lakers really having difficulty integrating a lot of people into their offense. Right now, they're going to go to Kareem again. He hits the skyhook. The Celtics, by the way, coming back with their two tough inside men, Parrish and McHale. And the substitution pattern is in Casey's favor here. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has been conserved during the season, so he ought to be nice and fresh for this playoff, but it's going to be a tough job for him if he's got to carry all the offense. So Casey Jones was able to go to the bench, and he brings back McHale and Parrish with a lead. Didn't have that luxury during the course of the season. 
Marini with a left hand sky hook. McHale to Seasting. Just under nine minutes remaining in the first half. And a new clock. Larry Bird, who has scored only four, but as Tommy mentioned, other people have gotten into the act so far. And uh, the Celtics have really used their bench wisely and not given up what they usually do with that bench a lot of points. Dennis Johnson. And a foul called before the shot. And Michael Cooper picks up his first foul. Lakers aren't close to getting into the penalty. The next foul against Boston will put them into the penalty. Kurt Rambis now has drawn the assignment of trying to stop Kevin McHale. Seasting uses a Paris screen. And Darren Day swoops in and keeps it alive. Day tried to get it to Paris. Not quite high enough. And here's a three on two Laker break to work. Laker basketball worthy out on that wing before any of the other or the opponent can get back at him. McHale, good position from Darren Day, and it's six points again. Well, he is just getting saccharine position, and I mean sweet. <laughs> Kareem off his hand, and here's a two-on-two. Two. Darren Day against Scott. Gets the basket and pretty moves inside by Darren Day, who played his college ball out here at UCLA. That was one heck of a basket by Day. There were two Lakers on him. Celtics with an eight-point lead. Worthy. The way he'll touch that. And Magic Johnson will be coming back in for the Lakers. But the Celtics have had the lead most of this first half. Rambis really took Darren Day out of that play so that Worthy could make that shot. Rambis and McHale pushing and two have met before in previous finals. Rambis clears Dennis Johnson's miss. Celtics get back. But they stagger the man pushing the ball up the court. They slowed the Lakers down. It's all half court against half court offense. And Worthy draws the foul and Larry Bird will come back in. Timeout. Up in the rafters here at the forum is our newest daddy at CBS. Congratulations and welcome back to Pat O'Brien. Patrick? Thank you very much, Dick. And isn't all night television a great invention? Anyway, we are 65 rows and 140 feet above sea level. The top row of the forum. And Dan, when people uh, ask you about your seats, do you say you have good seats? I think uh, the guy that I, I really appreciate most is, as I was telling you earlier, is knowing Bob Euchre. I got these tickets from Bob Euchre. My wife and I know him very well, and I think that sitting up here and watching the whole thing form is probably a better seat than being down on the court. Ever see any celebrities trek up here? No celebrities whatsoever. These are all good people up here. One thing you never hear is, is down in front. <laughs> Let's go back downstairs. <laughs> All right, Pat, thank you very much. And if you're wondering where the Lakers' offense has come from so far, that man, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and James Worthy, have combined for 25 of the Lakers' 34 points thus far. Fast break, all even. But the Lakers had hoped to really unjam their fast break attack, and they have not been able to do it here, and they have not paced the game as quickly as they had paced some of the games in Boston. It's been a very slow tempo. Larry Bird and Danny Ainge are back in, and so the Celtics starters that began the game are in there now, and Magic Johnson returns for the Lakers. Rambis, Worthy, Kareem, and Cooper and Magic are gone. Worthy now with 13. Tied with Kareem. McHale and Dennis Johnson each have 12 for the Celtics. Bird has only four, and Magic Johnson only two to this stage. Six forty remaining in the first half. Pick and roll. Ainge wisely went to McHale. Good defense by Kareem, I believe, inside. 
Here comes the Laker, four on three break. Worthy. Boy, do they jump on block shots. They're out there like now on a block shot, the Lakers. And it's a two-point game. And L.A. picking up the Lakers' third foul of the period. Lakers defending the pick and roll. And the second cutter goes through, but Magic really takes the good shot away from Ainge. And now, that was McHale taking the shot. Didn't see what happened, but he didn't even get close to the hoop. He had Rambis and Kareem in front of him. Meanwhile, Rambis picks up his second foul. Celtics already in the penalty, and the Lakers with three team fouls. Now make it four. And Kurt Rambis picks up another one. That's two quick ones and three in the game on Rambis. Rambis is trying to stop the cut of Larry Bird and fight him out of there. And uh, Bird is entitled to go at least take a step sideways, and Rambis wouldn't let him do it. So Michael Thompson comes into the game replacing Rambis. Crowd appreciates his hard hat effort. Uh, they like to use him to uh, retaliate a little physically. He's a banger, much like Kite was for the Celtics in this series. McHale blocked by Kareem. Kareem's having a tremendous series blocking shots way ahead of everybody, anyone else. Cooper for two, short. And Bird out of the pack, three on two break. Here's Parrish. The big man can run with the sprained ankle at all. I tell you, they look like a spry bunch in this one. Boy, they've gotten stronger as the series has progressed. Worthy miss, and Kareem had position on Parrish to tip it in. So Worthy and Kareem have 31 of the Lakers' 40 now. Well, both teams look very tired to me, but the Lakers probably a little bit more tired. McHale with a turnaround over Michael Thompson. Celtics by four. Nearly five minutes remaining. Casey Jones, who has urged patience for the Celtics throughout the series, even when they have a fast break advantage. He does not want the Celtics to take shots under pressure. If it's open, fine. If it's your shot, fine. Take it. But don't take shots under pressure. Here comes Ainge again, trying to sneak up on Kareem. Now one-on-one -on -one against Paris. Paris, don't forget, playing with two fouls. And Kareem, who shot 35% in the last two games in Boston, is 8 for 10. What a physical challenge this game is going to be to Kareem if he's got to carry the offense for the whole game. And Paris fired it up there because he was fouled. Kareem doing it both ends, and McHale has great position on Worthy and an excellent pass, and it would have been a layup, except where did those 40-year-old le legs come from? On offense now, they isolate Kareem on Parrish. Parrish played him perfectly, but he still was spry enough to get it up over the top. Foul was on Kareem as second now. Both teams are in the penalty. Celtics by four. L.A. came out strong with an 8-2 to two lead. And then the Celtics took over the pace of this game. They're trying to even it up and send it to game seven on Tuesday night here at the Forum. Kareem. Red hot. Everything's dropping for Abdul Jabbar, who has 19 first-half points. And tell me, Robert Parrish is running the floor as well as we've seen him throughout the playoff. He kept respraining that ankle from game to game and sometimes a couple of times uh, in each quarter. And he hasn't had that happen in this series, so I think he's got it all together. Magic is one for six from the field. Seven on the shot clock. And now he misses another one. Parrish had his pass deflected. Dennis Johnson. Cooper won't go for Bird's face. And Worthy forces the turnover, and here comes a four on two. L.A., and Bird breaks it up. And Dennis Johnson, two on one Boston. And Kareem broke that one up. 
And McHale, no basket. And a foul against the Lakers. McHale all over Daryl Garrison. Doesn't like the call. But the foul will be on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, his third personal foul. It is so difficult to break up a four-on-two fast break, but Larry Bird just forced the pass to go in the direction he wanted and just picked it off. What a beautiful play. And then Kareem did the same thing, a two-on-one, got right in the passing lane, read the pass's eyes, and knew where it was going. Kareem will go out with three fouls and 19 points. He's having an extraordinary game, but now in foul trouble, and A.C. Green replaces him. Pat Riley has used him sparingly all season long in key spots. And uh, they usually save him for the fourth quarter for his offense, but they've used him extensively. I'm wondering how he will be like in the fourth quarter after carrying so much of a burden for the Lakers. 3.20 remaining in the first half. It's 50 to 44 Celtics. Lakers cut it down to a couple of points on two occasions. Magic still cold. Worthy keeps it going. AC Green. They left him open and he hits his first points in the ball game. Second year, great season off the boards, but against the Celtics, he's been overmatched. The lead is four. throws it away. He was going for McHale. And now the Celtics will call a timeout, leading by four, with 2.40 remaining in the first half. That Pat Riley does for a 40-year-old center is make it easy for him to get position so he doesn't have to fight the, the likes of Robert Parrish. You're going to see right here the pick situation. Now Kareem will come in, and Robert Parrish will have to fight over the top to get him. Dennis Johnson has to go back and play him. Otherwise, there's a mismatch, and there's no elbowing or hard fight. A lot of physical stamina. They save Kareem's stamina with that little pick to the spot. Basically, five players have done the scoring in this game. Kareem, one of them. He and Worthy have accounted for 35 of 46 Laker points. And Mikhail Parrish and Dennis Johnson, 40 of 50 Boston points. You know, they asked Robert Parrish, does he see any appreciable difference in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? He says, yeah, he's got less hair now. And he shaved off whatever he had for this game. Two and a half to play in the first half. Parrish blocks Michael Thompson and a foul called, and it will be the third personal on Robert Parrish. So the starting centers, Kareem and Parrish, have three fouls. Now, Parrish has done a great job of really clogging up the middle. And here's Thompson makes an easy move on Mikhail, and Parrish must try for the reject, picks up that foul. One of the things that I'm wondering about is, in two prior series, the Pistons and the Bucks really went at Larry Bird, figuring that he was the poorest of the big Celtic defenders. And Michael Thompson right now is being played by Larry Bird, and they haven't gone at Larry Bird with the low post matchup. Walton, who has two fall, or fouls himself in there. Celtics holding on to a three-point lead. McHale. And Michael Thompson got him a little farther away than he liked. Good defense by Michael Thompson. Cooper, who hasn't scored, now is on the board with a runner off the glass, and the lead is nice to one. That time he caught Dennis Johnson on the rush to protect against the three-point play, and Cooper used it beautifully. Dennis Johnson having a strong first half, and the Celtics keep the lead. And you see the Celtics pick first back all the time. Bird ends up with Magic Johnson, and now they'll re-switch. Bird is starting Magic, and Worthy swoops in and Walton the rebound. Here's a three-on-three -three situation for the Celtics. And Walton and McHale, both of those big men coming up late. Celtics have the rebounding edge, and they rebounded the Lakers in all three games in Boston. Total. Walton against A.C. Green. 
Walton getting slow, coming back. Cooper gone for Cleveland. In and out. He'll get back on defense. And with under a minute to play, and Walton really taking his time coming up. He is really hurting. And it's awfully difficult when your feet aren't there to run up and down the court. And McHale's been doing it, but Walton has had mucho problems with it. It's possible that uh, that you can feel good and good in practice and start the game, and then after you've been there for a little while, all of a sudden those the pain starts to come back. Well, he just made a strong move uh, against AC Green to try and take it to the hoop, and, and when you land on an injury like that the wrong way, it just sh throws shooting pains th to your brain, and I think that's what happened. That was a 20-second timeout called by Casey Jones, and we want to remind you that if the Celtics win today, we will be with you for the seventh and deciding game of the 1987 NBA Finals, Tuesday night at 9 o'clock here at the Forum. And Fred Roberts has made his entry into the ball game, played three minutes in the last encounter, and Walton, who played seven minutes in this one, goes out. 52 to 49. Bird from the corner. Six points for Larry Bird and only his third basket. Half a minute to go in the first half and Magic comes back. Both Bird and Magic have been quiet offensively and now they may be heating up. Uh, Magic in the low post is the best alternative to Kareem Skyhook because none of the Celtic guards really can get at that hook shot. 13 on the shot clock, a differential of about three and a half to four seconds. Bird goes baseline and Worthy is called for the blocking foul. His second. Here's Bird using the fakes and just a little movement and Worthy steps into him and then it never does get that position foot down the charge or the blocking foul on Worthy. One of the images I'll always remember from the series is seeing Worthy and Bird eyeing each other isolated one on one in one of the corners of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to eye one on one either one of them. And a 20 second timeout called by Pat Riley to obviously drum up strategy when the Lakers get the ball for the perhaps the final shot in a four point game. Kareem on the bench with 19 points and three fouls, and Robert Parrish also sitting down with three fouls and 12 points, and ultimately we may come down to the foul situation with those two men. That's correct, and uh, right now what they're trying to do, both ball clubs, is during this timeout is devise a plan to get it in quick, get it up to court, and see if they can, there's nine seconds, you can still get a layup off of nine seconds. Uh, Let's see what happens. The foul shot's coming up first. Now Walton comes back in the ball game for the Celtics, and Byron Scott, the long range shooter, is in for LA. And they've got Worthy at half court and Cooper being guarded by Dennis Johnson up the other side near the Laker bench. So there may be a long bomb pass or an alley oop to Worthy. Walton harassing Green, the inbounds passer. Final seconds. Cooper. And Green misses the tip. And they get a lot of chances, but nothing goes. And this first half scoring pace definitely favors the Boston Celtics, who have the lead at halftime. 56 to 51. Brent Musburger will be back with the Prudential at the half after this message. Now it's my pleasure to welcome two gentlemen who rank amongst the greatest ever to play in the NBA. When you sit down and say who are your top two guards, well, how about this gentleman, the big O, Oscar Robertson with the Royals. You know what he averaged scoring in his first eight years? 30 points, and he also directed one of the great floor games in the history. It was his game until he decided to give the ball up. Who would you like alongside him in that backcourt? Well, how about this man, Jerry West? Mr. Clutch came to the Lakers and there has never been anybody who could score in the last couple of minutes with the pressure on any better than Jerry West. There he is hitting that dramatic shot against the New York Knicks in a championship. We welcome Oscar and Jerry West. Oscar, tell me, what was the best part of Jerry West's game? What did you like about Jerry as a guard? You know, I think Jerry was a smart player, and he took advantage of the defense because he had a great shot, and, you know, and, and, and the things about it, he knew how to play with his teammates. 
Jerry, how about Oscar? What was the best part of his game? Well, Brent, I've said it many times. Uh, there's never been a finer basketball player who ever played, and that includes today. Uh, I've always said it's impossible to compare people from different eras, but uh, I don't think this young man here would uh, embarrass himself against anyone. Well, I don't hope not. Neither would you, Jerry. You know. uh, Oscar, I, uh, as I said before, we love each other. <laughs> fierce competitors when you played. Jerry, let's start with the state of the game with you. Is there any rules you would change in the NBA? What about the health? You're now, of course, the general manager here in L.A. Well, Brent, I think the game is really very healthy. If I would see anything I'd like to change, and but this would have been a long time ago, I'd like to see him have a couple more feet under the basket to play with, just under the basket. Everyone's talking about why, uh, making the court wider or longer. If you would just take the present court, give him a couple more feet under the basket, you'd have to divide a new basket support. I think that that would clean up the play and the pivot tremendously. Oscar? How about you? I think it's a good game. I, I think there's a lot of a lot of things that are going. I think basketball is very healthy right now, Brent. Uh, uh, maybe that would help moving the court further out underneath the basket. But I think to let the game go. The players are just big players are just adjusting to the game of basketball today. Oscar, what about free agency? What would you have been worth if you'd have had free agency? What's your feeling about that? I think I call on and ask my wife that question. <laughs> she knows more about that than I do. <laughs> I don't know. I, you, you can't really say. I played when I did. I'm happy about it. But I think I would be worth a lot more money than I was worth when I played. Jerry, you have to view free agency from a different perspective now as a general manager. We've got Ralph Sampson, a lot of talk about David Robinson. Where do the Lakers stand regarding those two fine players? Well, first of all, Brent, we really have not been as actively involved in the free agent market as everyone had thought. Uh, we couldn't sign a free agent because we're over the salary cap. But uh, I think it's great. And, and, and again, there's an awful lot of players who I think is, have put this basketball game in the perspective where we have so many fans and so popular today. And those players certainly weren't compensated for what they were. The players today, in many cases, make more than they're worth, and in some cases, not enough. All right. We're going to come back. We want to talk about this game, the perspective of Game 6 from Jerry West and Oscar Robertson. We'll have that right after these messages from your local station. Of sport and they are matched again for a championship the Celtics and the Lakers the crowd somewhat quiet here Jerry West 56 to 51 I think the Celtics have surprised them there was an opening burst in this game by your team and then the Celtics held it off and came back what's your perspective Jerry on what happened well Brent I really thought the way Boston play we might maybe lucky to be as close as we are but frankly I like our position I think we're going to win this game the second half why would you say that other than just being optimistic about your franchise what do you see that encourages you well you know I, I see us have a lot of energy and, and defensively uh, I think we can do a little bit better job than we have but Boston has uh, shot the ball tremendously well but I think they've searched out the loose man maybe better than we have Maybe we were a little bit too high for this game, but I think we're going to play a great second half. Oscar, uh, what do you think about this game? Well, I think Parrish is playing an exceptionally a very fine basketball game, not only playing when they, when they uh, have court game, but he's getting out of court on the break. Yeah. And Larry Bird, even though, he's, even though he's not scoring, is making the right passes. You know, Oscar, I have said that Eastern Conference basketball is tougher, more physical, and once they got into a bump and grind war that the Lakers haven't been all year, it was going to be tough. How do you see that? Is there a difference between East and West Coast basketball? There may be, but I think it's a different type of basketball, as you say. You know, uh, the Lakers run, all the West Coast teams seem to run up and down the court so very fast. On the West Coast, on the East Coast, they seem to set up a lot more. Maybe it's because they can't run as fast. Jerry, is there anything to that observation that you didn't play as tough a team as the Celtics beat to get into the final? Well, we'll see when this playoff's over, Brent, but I, I really like to think that basketball has, uh, every year, something's different in each, each conference. And a lot of it depends on where you draft. Boston, uh, have, of course, have assembled a wonderful team. Uh, they've been really good, and I think people uh, say this team is beat up. I tell you what, I think they're healthy now, and they're playing their best basketball. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think they're healthy, too. That's right. <laughs> Jerry and Oscar, I want to thank you both for being with us here this afternoon. Two of the all-time greats in the history of the great game of basketball, Jerry West and Oscar Robertson. Coming up now, it's the second half, game six of the finals. The Celtics lead the Lakers 56 to 51 and just a few moments ago Pat O'Brien had a chance to get the thoughts of Lakers head coach Pat Riley. Anything surprising in the first half Pat. Well not really I just think we have to be a little more patient with our offense and uh, take better shots. I think we're excited and uh, um, it's almost a blessing to be down just five so uh, we got to be a little more patient in the second half. Concerned about Kareem's minutes. Not really. Uh, there's no time now. You know he's had a good uh, pace all year long and I think uh, you know, the last game of the year, the last two games of the year, he's ready to roll. Thank you. Good luck, second half. Back to Dick. 
Thank you very much, Pat. Tommy, once again, it looks like this game could have been played at Boston Garden, the way the Celtics have maintained the tempo and have things in their favor right now. They have slowed the Lakers down. They've taken the run out of the game. Uh, but what I'm looking at here is the Celtics, in doing it, spent an awful lot of minutes that keep big guys, particularly Bird and McHale. And the other thing for the Lakers, I, I kind of disagree with Pat Riley. I think uh, that was an awful lot of minutes, plus the burden of carrying the offense by Kareem in the first half. I don't know whether he's going to be able to produce like he normally does in the fourth quarter for the Lakers. Especially with three personal fouls if he does get in foul trouble. By the way, let's take a look at the shooting statistics. And the Lakers, who are under 50% in all three games in Boston, are under, again, the 50% mark. This could be the key right now to the game. Nine-point differential in free throws between the clubs and a five-point Celtic lead. And, again, the fast break points. Last game, it was Boston with the edge over the speedy Lakers. And once again... It's 16 to 14, so that's awfully close in the fast breaks points. You're looking at the scoring, and you can see the three men who did the bulk of it, and as Tommy talked about their time, Parrish played only 14 minutes, so that's a plus for the Celtics there. And for the Lakers scoring, basically a two-man affair. Well, with uh, Kareem having to really score those low post points, and Worthy, who has really been pretty good today. I, the key guy that they got to get into that lineup is... Scott off the break. They got to get him with some outside shots so that he starts feeling good about himself. And the crowd behind the Lakers as we start the third period. The Lakers scored 25 and 26 points in each of the first two periods, which is far below what they're used to. And the Lakers scored 30 or more in seven out of eight quarters in the first two games. Bird for three, way off the mark. And Magic Johnson with a three-on-three -three break. And if Byron Scott doesn't produce early, you may see a lot of Cooper in this half. Magic goes in against Ainge. He brushed him and used his body. That's what is known as a quick hitter. Before the Celtics defense was totally set up, they got the ball in a low post to a good matchup. Pick and roll to Parrish, and Kareem has picked up his fourth personal foul. So when you talk about how many minutes he can play, that will go into Pat Riley's computer. Four fouls on Abdul-Jabbar. He's going to leave him in. He's got to leave him in. But he can't pick up another one. Johnson misses Green the rebound. Needs Kareem's offense. Well, looks like Kareem may be coming out, Tommy, as Michael Thompson is at the scorer's table. Green. McHale and Ainge collide, and here's Boston, two on three, and Dennis Johnson will slow it down. Ainge, they close the middle, and Bird lingered in the corner, and McHale, no basket foul. If it had dropped. Worthy picks up his third personal foul, and Tommy, James Worthy played all 24 minutes in the first half. He's young enough, and he ought to have the stamina to play the whole game. That's what Riley's hoping. McHale against Michael Thompson. He's in for Kareem. Ains taps it out. The uh, Lakers have gone with an exceedingly big lineup right now. Harris did. Excuse me, they did take this Kareem out. Two on one, Michael Thompson back to Green. And a foul in the act of shooting as Danny Ainge had Green inside and picks up personal foul number two. Now, the Lakers have their fastest unit on the court with Michael Thompson as the center and Green. If I were Pat Riley right now, I'd be thinking of using Green. He's the guy that's been roaming around. The Celtics are not really totally concerned with him. He can get a four on three situation almost anytime they want with Green. Riley, who said that if the Lakers ultimately lose, it'll be public humiliation. He said that even before the last game in Boston. And so far, the Celtics have yet to score with nearly two minutes gone by in this third period. Every time the Lakers have come close, the Celtics have gotten the hoop to give them a three-point lead. But Worthy saves it from Magic Johnson and a brilliant play by James Worthy. Play. 
There is real grit. And James Worthy with the full dive to save it, to create the easy hoop by Magic. Their first lead since 13 to 12. Tremendous play. Well, he just steps out with those quick feet and he picks it off. But this part of the play is inspirational to the rest of his teammates. They say if Worthy can dive and play that hard, I better do the same. And here you see Magic now just picking it up. No green jersey in sight, and it's two. But a very smart call of a timeout by Casey Jones to take that emotion away from the fans. So the Celtics still haven't scored. Here in this third period, and the Lakers regain the lead. They were down by as many as nine. Celtics are not keying on A.C. Green. Ains forced that shot in a four-on-three break for the Lakers. Worthy. A fourth man up, a big factor, Dick. Celtics now having trouble getting that fourth guy up to protect against the break. And Paris throws the ball away from Bird. All eight Laker points this period are on the fast break. And Worthy lost it. Here it comes, swooping at you. You get the feeling you're one of those defenders. Look at the fourth man up. Right inside and two. The Celtics still haven't scored. More than three minutes gone by in this period. And the first illegal defense call against the Lakers. That's a warning. Next time, of course, will be the team. The Celtics have been so good at searching out whoever A.C. Green is playing right now. They're trying to go to McHale being guarded by Thompson when perhaps the better matchup would be Paris being guarded by Green. Danny Ainge, who was red hot on Thursday, is one for three today. And he is playing on a sprained ankle. Ainge goes for three here. Still off the mark. And it'll be Lakers ball. are on their toes defensively. That usually means fast break baskets. Michael Thompson short with the jumper. Danny Ainge going strong to the hoop and an offensive foul against Ainge as the Lakers had terrific defensive position inside. That was a very poor move by Danny Ainge. There was no place to go. And that's the type of shot Casey Jones did not want the Celtics to try to attempt. Third foul on Ainge. So Ainge and Parrish with three. Worthy has three, and Kareem has four for the Lakers. Magic. Ten points for Magic Johnson. Larry Bird is not yet into double figures himself. Is Johnson. As Tom has mentioned he's got to penetrate, he's got to make the shot, and Magic Johnson pulls up lame in midcourt. And Gary Beattie, the trainer, is out there. Magic trying to run it off. With the pace that these guys play in and their size, just amazing how they managed to get hurt and come back and fight through it all time. They bang knees. DJ banged Magic's knee. You could see him coming out of the pack. And Magic, of course, has had tendinitis problems with the kneecap for the better part of his career here at Los Angeles. And But he is the type of guy that will bounce back nicely from that. He'll come out and play no matter what. I think at this stage of the series, you won't see anyone sitting down. And we saw Bill Walton. Give it a yeoman try in the first half. 
The Lakers have had an injury-free year, which is also one of the ingredients to winning a championship. The Celtics, of course, haven't had it that way, and that's part of having a team win. Stay healthy. 61-58, Lakers. Magic with Ames. Double with McHale. Harris, the rebound. That's the first time that Magic has been forced to take that sky hook of his, the junior sky hook, going out from the basket instead of into the basket. Celtics have still only scored two points. And a Laker foul. It'll be their third. AC Green, of we said before, has had difficulty denying anybody in the Celtics' big three inside position, and the Celtics have not really gone to that matchup until now. Two fouls on Green and an offensive foul. Kevin McHale with his third foul. So McHale and Parrish and Ainge have three fouls for the Celtics. Once the Celtics win tonight on the South Canoe, it will be a business. Quickly, what about today's outcome? I think the Celtics are doing They're really playing good there at the moment. They're shooting well, but the Lakers right now have got great defense, but I think we're going to break them. All right, Greg, let's go back to Dick. Thank you, gentlemen. Magic to Worthy. Great pass from Magic Johnson. And Worthy makes a million of those. That's the first one I've ever seen a miss like that. And that was a big one because uh, the Celtics come out of the huddle and... Uh, you don't want to have one right in your face after a timeout. Larry Bird, who has only one basket since the first period. Still cold. Lakers by three. Michael Thompson and Bird. And McHale went up. And the Celtics lost the ball to the Lakers. McHale and Bird just were punishing each other for that rebound. And neither one would let go. And... Ended up on the floor. Worthy with the basket now has 20 points. The game high scorer. McHale wild off the glass. There's a four on two break. Byron Scott. The Lakers are ready to pounce on any opportunity and the Celtics have become totally disorganized. get the rebound and pitch it out to Magic Johnson but Byron Scott will take off up the court something now you're going to see at the tail end of this thing only two defenders of the Celtics the speed and Byron Scott this is his type of basketball jump shots on the wing with nobody on him and the Celtics in prior games were getting to him before he could get that shot off home and away has been a big difference for Byron Scott as you see what he scored and what he shot in the first two here in L.A. and then the next three in Boston, he only has four points on two for five thus far. But there was no such thing as Byron hitting the open jumper in the last three at Boston Garden. So the biggest lead of the game for the Lakers right now, seven points. Celtics have been outscored 14 to two in this period and James Worthy's diving save and Magic's hoop spurred them on. And the Celtics out of that timeout went right to the Paris Green matchup. And that's where I think they ought to be going because they'll get some points at, or double teaming will produce easy outside shots for the Celtics. Green with his third foul and Worthy sitting down for the first time today. Five and a half to play in the third. commits the foul and that'll send Parrish to the line. Here's Michael Cooper and Larry Bird. Bird trying to uh, come over the top and Cooper bumping him before he can make the move. I mean it gets a little physical under that. Little guys, little guys have to really put their hands on the big guys and then run fast. I know we've seen a lot of that. The Lakers are already in the penalty and the Celtics have committed only one in this third, and Parrish missed both free throws. So the Celtics still have scored only two points and more than halfway through this third period. Green, and a tip-in by A.C. Green, and it's a nine-point Laker lead. They're going at Larry Bird. Bird is guarding A.C. Green. Bird, the 
misses. Harris. And a loose ball foul called against the Celtics. It'll be Mc... Robert Parrish's fourth foul. So Parrish and Kareem have four fouls. As come into the ball game, replacing Kevin McHale, who has scored 16 for the Celtics. He and Dennis Johnson lead them in scoring. Those minutes in the first half by the Celtic big guys, Bird and McHale, they need their offense. They have to have their legs if they're going to produce. Michael Thompson makes good on the second try. And the Lakers' offensive rebounding playing a big role now in their 11-point lead, the leading margin of this game. The fast team of the Lakers right now in there, really being productive on the board. And Parrish lost the ball, and it was last touched by a Laker. You talked about how the Lakers look tired early. I think the Celtics look a bit tired now. Yes, they do. Dennis Johnson. And that's only the second field goal of this third period. Both by Dennis Johnson, who has 18. Larry Bird has just been having all kinds of shooting problems, and they're doubling him on every opportunity. Magic to Green. Harris gets the rebound. Outlets to Day. And Darren Day, who's really had a fine shooting series. He was 8 for 13 coming into this game against L.A. Boston needs some easy hoops. That's why Darren Day is in there, perhaps on a hard push to get a layup just like he did. And not exactly a layup, but an uncontested shot. Magic to Michael Thompson. And Parrish may have picked up his fifth foul. I believe he has. Very big decision for Casey Jones. Well, he's got to go to his bench, but Walton has gotten the call over Greg Kite today, Tommy. Are you surprised? Yes, I am, because uh, Kite was so successful in getting those quick feet back to stop the break. Walton, with the broken foot, has been not able to go full out. But one, a much more knowledgeable and experienced player. And they're opting for Walton's experience at this particular point to try and shut him down and block out and get some rebounds. A nine-point Laker lead. An old Celtic philosophy. If you're going to lose, lose with your best. Walton tried to force it into Bird. Magic out of a crowd to Michael Thompson. And the Lakers are making what they like to call a statement here in the third period. They sure are, Dick, and they're getting their feet going. They're playing excellent defense. They've outscored the Celtics 22 to 6. Ames kept it alive for Bird. And Larry Bird now in double figures. Four for 13 for Bird, and he shot 50% in only one game of this series. They are really getting at him, and Worthy staying with him on the picks coming off the top. Cooper, when he had him, everybody in Bird's jersey. And Kareem, with four fouls, has been spending virtually this entire third period on the bench. Worthy just came back a minute ago. Darren Day with the foul. That's the fourth team foul against the Celtics. One more there in the penalty. Here it is, and Day has got his hand on Worthy, and Worthy just smacking it off, and all of us, wow. I'll tell you, that's been going on the whole series to call one like that. That's ridiculous. Worthy went around Darren Day as if he weren't there. 22 for James Worthy. And two minutes to go in the third period. And Dennis Johnson goes blind, and he'll go to the free throw line. And the Celtics... 
have scored only eight points in this period. Dennis Johnson trying to take it strong to the hoop, and he takes a hard foul there by Worthy. So, uh, there's Worthy around Darren Day. Quick step and just strong, powerful move against a much smaller player who ought to be able to deal with that quickness. Fourth foul on Worthy. So Kareem and Worthy with four. Parrish on the bench with five for Boston. You know, it's funny. Every time you go from one venue to the other, the hard fouls happen by the team who happens to be playing on their home turf. Roberts coming in for Larry Bird, who goes out with ten points. Depends on how you look at everything in basketball. You could say the Celtics came very close to winning all three games in Boston. And then you could say that the Lakers did a good job in winning one out of three by play beating the Celtics in a low-scoring, tough, down-to-the-wire game to take one. Very difficult for the Celtics to catch up quickly against the Laker team. They just don't have that speed to go out there and press. Pat Riley calls a timeout. 1.53 on the clock. And the Lakers are up by nine. When you hold the Lakers to 51 points at a half at 25 and 26, you're doing your job. But the Lakers came out strong in the third period, and Tommy, I have to go back to that great hustle play by James Worthy that seemed to ignite them. Right now, let's go up to Pat O'Brien with the owner of what they call the Fabulous Forum. Pat? And behind us is maybe the largest doctor's office in America. Dr. Jerry Buss, did you ever realize when you bought this franchise that it had come to this? Well, we certainly hoped it would, Pat. I mean, uh, from the very beginning, this is the kind of thing we wanted to do, but it's grown beyond my wildest expectation, and I'm just thrilled with it. We've heard a lot about Showtime, Dr. Buss. Explain Showtime from your perspective. Well, whenever you have a player like Magic that does all of those magic things and the speed of Worthy, and of course Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with a famous guy hook, I mean, it is a show, so we call it Showtime. Was there a conscious effort to do that, to get the stars out, to have a coach that's dressed so like Pat Riley's dress? Oh, the whole thing seems to mesh together. Well, the whole idea was to get L.A. behind the team. And of course, as you know, one of the biggest industries we have out here is show business. So the answer is yes. We wanted the show people to come out to show that L.A. was in fact behind their team. There was a time when we didn't have a home court advantage. And the whole idea was to establish one. We think we've done that. As an owner, objectively, do you think this is a very healthy sport right now, the NBA? Uh, I think it's on a roll like no other sport is. We're, we're jumping by leaps and bounds. And I just hope it continues this way, Pat. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bus, let's go back down to Dick. All right, Pat. And like Boston Garden, they don't put up conference championship banners, just world championship banners. And the Lakers are looking to win their fourth in this decade. Well, this is Boston's version of the uh, their press team: Walton, Roberts, Day, and Danny Ainge. Michael Thompson setting the screen. Magic Johnson nails one. Big hoop. That was a statement basket by Magic. He has six of his 12 points here in the third period. And Kareem has spent all of it watching. Danny Ainge. Walton. And Walton, good job by Michael Thompson inside defensively. Bothered Walton's shot. Nearly a minute to go in the third. Magic from the other side. Makes no difference. The spotlight's on. The speed is out of the box for the Lakers, and it's going to be showtime, I think, in this fourth quarter. 13-point lead, their biggest, and there is a weird basket. And it's Walton who gets credit for it. The lead is 11. It was 13. And consider at halftime, Boston was up by five. Celtics got to get it down to about six points if possible within the next four minutes. Four on four. Dennis Johnson all the way in, hard off the glass. Daryl Garrison will call a foul against the Lakers. Let's check. No loose ball foul on Fred Roberts. Both 
teams in the penalty. 29 seconds remaining in the third period. And Larry Bird, who has had his problems shooting, he has been their best defensive rebounder for the Celtics during the series. And right behind Casey Jones is Bird sitting, who has scored only 10 today. Magic Johnson on the line, and there's Sam Vincent making his first appearance as Ainge goes out. Magic now, 16 points, 14 assists. The Celtics contained the speed of the Lakers for three and a half games, and all of a sudden it popped up with this unit on the floor right now. Thompson as the center, and A.C. Green as the power forward. That's where they've been most effective. Vincent throws it away into the hands of Michael Thompson. Cooper couldn't save it. Out of bounds with two seconds remaining. But the Lakers have come on big here. Magic intercepts. And an 18-point turnaround here in the third period. Maybe just what the doctor orders are doing some skating of their own as... CBS continues its coverage of the 1987 NBA Finals. Fast break points were almost even at halftime, but forget about that. The Lakers started a run. They also blistered the Nets while the Celtics had problems, and Boston scored only 12 points, and a third period reminiscent, reminiscent of what the Celtics have made their living on for so many years, coming out strong and blowing out a team. Well, the game isn't a blowout at this point, but the Lakers are in command. Parrish in the game, playing with five fouls. Magic to Green. And he lost it out of bounds. So in the game for the Celtics, Jerry Seasting and Dennis Johnson at guard. Bird, McHale, and Parrish up front. Celtics have to have at least three good defensive stands and then turn it into baskets up the other end to have a shot at this ball game. Does that first one count as one? Right, in, that, it certainly does. Right in a row, too. Paris baseline. Yep. And Michael Thompson out to Cooper. Magic. Cooper. Cooper has only four points. Danny Ainge has two, so maybe their injuries have affected them today four on two four on three that's what the lakers have been doing to the celtics the speed very evident here biggest lead of the game 15. mikhail lost it to cooper and here comes showtime again last touch by Byron Scott. It'll be Celtics ball. And Danny Ainge checks back in the game. And Seasting goes out. Uh, Casey Jones saying right now, I'm going with my top five guys. We're going to win this together or we're going to lose it together. And they have done a great job all season long as five-man unit with the green jerseys. Michael Thompson on Parrish's miss. Scott. Dennis Johnson. And the Celtics better stage a rally in a hurry. Dennis Johnson, who's one to do it. Makes it an 85 to 70 game. Kareem is spending a lot of time on the bench. He's playing with four fouls and well rested. And an official's timeout now. 9.45 remaining in the game. can't wait to start celebrating at the forum. It's 9.45 remaining and a 15-point Laker lead. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Let's take a look at what happened with Dennis Johnson and Magic Johnson. Now, this is the home of the pratfall, but that definitely is not a pratfall. It kind of hit him underneath the nose and the, and the, the lip Magic. unintentionally right. as he was really trying to communicate with one of his teammates, and Dennis Johnson just happened to be there. 
Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is back in the game. He's been on the bench for 13 and a half minutes. Basket by Michael Thompson. And when Kareem came out, the Celtics were leading by three a minute into the third period. So it was Magic with 12 in the period. Michael Thompson, six. Michael Thompson's having a fantastic game off the bench for the Lakers. He got a rebound there. It's eight. And Cooper hits. 89 to 70. Timeout. Dancing on the court, and I'm sure dancing in the crowd as the L.A. Lakers now nine minutes and 13 seconds away from their fourth NBA title of this decade and fifth since they've come to L.A. But the Celtics have never quit all year long, as you know. McHale has his shot blocked. Worthy comes down with it. But the Lakers took charge in the third period, Tommy, and this thing to even come close now that was always their ultimate weapon they had trouble springing it loose in boston but they sure did here and when they get it loose they are unstoppable michael thompson and kareem with worthy up front dennis johnson draws the foul and a word about michael thompson here who has 13 points and eight rebounds we were out here in the regular season game between these teams and a couple of days before near the trading deadline Jerry West, who is Brent's halftime guest along with the Big O, made a deal. It could have been Wayne Cooper, could have been a lot of people, but he held out and got Michael Thompson. Everyone thought that that would be the deal that would put the Lakers over the top. Sure it was. A championship move, in my opinion. And I said so that day because you don't get a quality backup center like a Michael Thompson, and they needed a quality backup center. That's where they were really hurting. Maybe a little too quotable for Pat's taste when he came here. He says, you know, these practices are tougher than playing the Celtics. And Pat Riley says, I don't want to read too many of those quotes. <laughs> well, that's uh, no, perhaps no, when, he, when he learned to win when he came here with the Lakers. Worthy with the rebound. And a foul inside. A loose ball foul against Kareem and that's his fifth personal foul and in a close game that would be a big factor but right now it isn't that spurt by the Lakers with that fast break really now said hey Kareem does not have to really score in his third quarter or fourth gets the rebound Cooper drills it to Michael Thompson and Bird played well defensively four minutes gone by at this final period McHale at the other end. Kevin now with 18 points. It's going to be a run and gun game from here on in. And that favors the Lakers. And those points by McHale were his first of this half. No more pecking away by Boston, slowing the tempo down. They're going to have to try and match the tempo with the Lakers and still win. Kareem. Basket counts. Nicholson, who went to Boston for the middle game. Back home here. And Robert Parrish has fouled out of the ball game with six. 12 points and five rebounds for Robert Parrish. There's Kareem. They take away the sky hook to the baseline. And he always seems to come up with something a little bit different. A left-hand hook. It rattled around a little bit, but... It went in. Greg Kite replaces Parrish in the Celtic lineup. Kite, who played a major role in two Boston wins, was shuttled to the background today, Tommy. I don't know. He, when he shaved his hair, I don't know if he came out prepared to just scare the Celtics. He looks mean with those goggles. I mean, I'm talking about Kite going to the background in this yep. game. Kite has come in and they elected to go with Walton's experience rather than Kite's fast legs and that may have something to do with this situation Dennis Johnson leads the Celtics with 26 and Larry Bird has scored only 10 points Dennis Johnson with a good defensive play Cooper comes right back at you Kite 
is on Kareem. McHale. One on three. Ames for three. With another rebound, Danny Ainge is one for eight from the field. McHale up court. On the wing, Dennis Johnson as well, but Ainge goes coast to coast. Dennis Johnson blocked by Michael Thompson. And DJ draws the foul inside. And Connor Henry is coming into the game for the Boston Celtics. goes out and the clock shows 626 92 to 76 Lakers and Worthy picks up his fifth personal foul it was a year ago a little more than that I guess where the Lakers were unceremoniously dumped by the Houston Rockets in five games and the Lakers had to regroup they came to camp focused they won more games than anyone in the NBA this season and established the home court advantage. And Tommy, that's why they play the regular season because the home court hit, just as the Celtics had it in the Eastern Conference, would pay dividends with them in the series against Milwaukee and Detroit. Very, very important. And they did a lot of great things. In addition to uh, changing the style back to using streakers instead of wide bodies, they, they really put themselves on the line, accepted new roles, new responsibilities. Michael Cooper came along, changed his game to become a middleman and an outside shooter, go for the offense. More people got involved. Foul was on Dennis Johnson. Kareem against Hype. Two-man game. Long skyhook. And Worthy is hustling for the loose ball as if the, this game was still tied. And it's Lakers' ball. And they want a timeout. James Worthy has come back with a vengeance today. 22 points and all-court hustle for the Lakers. Serene, you wonder if that's how they kept their nickname, the Lakers. That's a big lake, isn't it? That's the biggest of the big. But it's going to be crazy in the Laker locker room if the score holds up because the champagne is on ice. And I know Brent doesn't have his very best jacket with him today. I know that. Oh. <laughs> All right, Barney. Never, <laughs> never do, Dick. Cooper. Michael Thompson. See whether he pushed off. And he did. The Lakers started it off in the playoffs against Denver. Then they moved on to Golden State. They won three straight and lost the fourth. One in five. And then they took Seattle out in four games. Three of them very tough encounters. Bird just having an off day offensively as a shot blocked by Kareem. But where would the Celtics be without Larry Bird? Dennis Johnson will go to the line. You have to say, though, that the Lakers are as pretty a bunch, really, as the Celtics. There's no question. The Celtics had true grit going through two seven game series to get here with all those injuries. Kareem's going out, Tommy. Let me just interrupt you. The hand for the 40 year old. James, no, check it. James Worthy fouls out with six. I guess Kareem will get a hand also, but Worthy goes out. Fouled out with 22 points. And you have to say, you know, getting back to true grit, that Worthy was probably one of the guys that had to resurrect his ego. And that's true grit under this type of pressure. You know, when after you lose a game and you don't play well and all this 500 some odd press people are pounding around saying what happened what happened you can go in the tank pretty fast he responded beautifully to that situation with a big game today well, we were asking questions too <laughs> <laughs> magic to Kareem what will happen as we get close is that Pat Riley will take out one by one the key men and 
This place will rock even at that point. McHale has it blocked by Kareem. Three on two, fast break. Cooper to Magic. Follow up, Scott. Worthy was the top scorer for the Lakers in the playoffs. 22nd timeout, Celtics. But this issue has long been settled. Right in the middle of that huddle is Pat Riley, who likes to think of his team not so much as a glitter and showtime team, but a hard hat team in their own right because of their work ethic. And Pat Riley wins and he will he'll join red Auerbach and johnny kundla as the only coaches to win three or more nba titles and i know tommy you have respected very much what pat riley has done not only in not making dramatic changes but in his system i tell you pat riley became truly a great coach this year because in my opinion it was courageous to make the changes he made and possibly withstand some severe criticism if it didn't work another turnover Lakers lead by 16. The Celtics came out, withstood an early Laker thrust, led by seven at the quarter and five at the half. You know my favorite story about Pat Riley? He talks about the peripheral opponent, and he turns everything off during the playoffs. You know, food, he doesn't eat that much, and he doesn't take telephone calls, and he got a letter from his best friend congratulating on getting to the final, and the signature said, signed, peripheral opponent. <laughs> Kareem is fouled. Kevin McHale, who may undergo surgery. Courage of the Boston Celtics cannot be overemphasized. They were battered and bruised in the early series, and they were healthier here. And I think even Larry Bird knew what was in store for the Celtics going against a very strong Laker team. They bottled up that speed. They got it back in the bottle. They kept it there for three and a half games, and all of a sudden the bottle broke, and out it came, poured all over them. Along with a lot of champagne, it looks like. 4-14 remaining. And I can't say enough about Casey Jones this year either for the Celtics, what he did for his ball club. He says, uh, I didn't have a bench. My bench was in street clothes most of the year sitting there. Four minutes remaining for this 1987 season. Dennis Johnson misses a three. And the rebound by Cooper. The Celtics have scored only 24 points in the second half. And it's a three on one. And Larry Bird with only his fifth basket in 15 tries. So we have not had a repeat champion. It'll be now be 18 years. Men and Green were the last to do it in 1969. Kareem with an exclamation point. 17 point lead for the Lakers. McHale comes back. The guy that really took over this ball club this year was Magic Johnson. And one of the things that Pat Riley said was, you know, Magic has got the perfect ego. He always considered the Lakers Kareem's team. He never infringed on his territory. And this year he's assumed the responsibility and Kareem looks good. And the Celtics still fighting. Well, there's a fellow we haven't talked about in this series, never mentioned his name, but he'll go into the book. And the Celtics still fighting. Well, there's a fellow we haven't talked about in this series, never mentioned his name, but he'll go into the books. Billy Thompson, who was acquired in a deal with Atlanta, played on the NCAA champion Louisville Cardinals last year, and is on the way to becoming only the fourth player in NBA history to go from an NCAA crown to an NBA title. There are the others. And, of course, he's playing with one of them in Magic Johnson. And Billy Thompson had a hyperextended knee, suffered in the first series against Denver, and he is a player that Pat Riley and the Lakers like down the road. He's got that speed to get on the wing, plus power to rebound, maybe even better than Worthy on the offensive glass. 
Pat Riley had his way. Every player would be between 6'7 and 6'9 and could run on the line. And, and the, think. Two and a half remaining. And a foul and Kareem. No basket. Birds coming back in for the Celtics. And Roberts going out. 99-87 and the Celtics down by 12 with 2.30. And of course, they have slowly pecked away here. I can remember when I coached and he was with the Milwaukee Bucks. And I thought the best way to beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was to attack his stamina. Was I wrong, huh? No, we won the championship that year, but here he is. 40 years of age. He's somehow really got that stamina and then some. Well, he's become a lot more warmer and accessible. I think the fire that destroyed his home was in the park there because people around the country sent him jazz albums. And I think he became a much warmer person since that time. Well, he sits in the locker room and he talks to people now. You know, not, uh, he was very quiet introspective person and everybody uh, kind of was uh, reluctant to really invade that privacy that shell that was around him but he's much more open now it appears and he enjoys the game as I guess everyone does when you get toward the end of the career you realize what you may be missing and you appreciate it a little more Larry Bird has six points since the first period it's a 12 point lead for the Lakers and they're 215 away from winning they did a great job on Larry Bird, denying him the ball, the Lakers, really putting a, a quick man on him, working him over the picks. And the foul. Thirty-one points for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He carried him all through the first half until they managed to unleash that quickness and speed. Uh, he is as big a part of this thing, probably bigger than anybody else right now, because he held the fort. And then in the third period, when he went to the bench with foul trouble, it was Magic and Michael. Michael Thompson and Magic Johnson who took over, and that was the key moment in this game. Bird fighting his way in. 104-81. This might be the last time we'll see the five Celtic starters together. They got to make sure that they don't undergo wholesale changes either, as the Lakers didn't last year. Michael Thompson with 15 points. The Celtics have been a great organization of knowing when to hold and when to fold, I'll tell you. But they don't sell that nuclear short until it's way down the road, too far to be reclaimed. Kareem the rebound. And I'm sure Pat Riley will want to start taking his stars out. And it's going to come soon. Magic. At the next dead ball, you're going to hear a couple of rousing ovations. Day is fouled, and now you'll hear him. Kareem goes over to Casey Jones and shakes his hand. And Magic goes out as well. scored 16 points and had 19 assists. Kareem with 32 points and four block shots. And the Lakers wound up undefeated at home in the playoffs. I must 
say, Dick, a little tribute to the Celtics, too. They never gave an inch in this entire series. No, they didn't. They got beaten, but they never quit. They came up a real grit. Adrian Brands. And a foul. 29 seconds remaining. The last time the Lakers won the title, they won it in Boston Garden. They're winning this at home against the team they want to beat more than any other. Fred Roberts. celebration belongs here. And they're getting ready to pop the corks. Champagne is flowing in the locker room of the NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers. We'll be back with the Pat, thank you. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, at the age of 40, you're still collecting championships. Kareem, this one has to feel about as sweet as any of the others. Oh, it's a nice one. It's uh, we work real hard for it, and I think the most uh, significant part of it is that uh, at the beginning of the season, nobody picked us to even finish first in our division. And uh, here we are with the world championship. I'm really proud of this team. Kareem, will you definitely be back next year and for two years? Are you committed to two years now? Well, I'll definitely be back next year. Uh, the Lakers are trying to talk to me about it, an additional year. I'm going to listen to what they have to say. I haven't made any commitment on that. All right, but we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Congratulations. Get cap, get cap. The most valuable player for the third time. They have won four championships. And Magic Johnson, an MVP, unanimous choice. Congratulations. Thank you, Assis. It was a t total team effort, really. You know, we all just uh, chipped in and just got the job done. And it's just great to be a champ again. Does this one feel better than even the first one, Magic? Oh, yeah, it, it did. Because of the fact what we did during the regular season, we carried it on into the playoffs. So it, it, it's, it's definitely the sweetest one. I'd just like to say hello to my mom and dad back in Lansing, Michigan. All right, congratulations, Magic. We will continue from the Lakers locker room.